His merry men have, have done an outstanding job yet again to get the ground up and about and looks fantastic. Can't wait to get into it. Absolutely freaky. And joining us in commentary this afternoon is none other than Chilton Club legend and reigning premiership coach Luke Brooks. Welcome to you, Brooksy. Thanks, boys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it should be a cracking day. Good to be back out here. Yeah, how does it feel to be back at this ground, Brooksy? Of course, the scene of such a famous premiership win for your club last year. Uh, I was very good driving through. Normally come in just hoping to do well, whereas, yeah, come in this year as the, the reigning premiership team and a bit better conditions than what we were last time we were here. was a ter terrible day weather-wise, yeah, but a yeah, good yeah. result for Chilton as a club. So, yeah, yeah it should be a great day. It certainly was. It was an absolute shocker, wasn't it, weather-wise? Didn't you get bogged trying to leave? I, uh, close to it, Freaky. Yeah, <laughs> I was up. Anyway, I said to Garcia, can you come around and just sit there and wait for me because this is going to be very interesting. So anyway, spun the wheels, a little bit touchy at first, but then finally gained traction and then was able to get out. Well, so fair to say, Brooks, he had a much better day than you. He did. did. Last time we were at him. Yeah, I, I went home on a bus. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, it didn't get bogged? No, no <laughs> bogged. <laughs> How long did the celebrations go for, Brooksy? Uh, for me, being one of the older boys, I got home in the early hours of Wednesday morning, but a few of the other boys kicked on a bit longer. But yeah, we really enjoyed it. It's been a long time, so we, we definitely enjoyed the moment. Yeah, and meant a lot to so many people. Yeah, it was great. Just I had grown men come up and cry, and I didn't realise it meant that much to them. But yeah, yeah we're a pretty proud club, and a, obviously not a huge town. And we used to have a lot of success, and it had been a long time since 1998. So back then we won three flags on the day, and then, yeah, come 2022, we won three flags again. So history repeats itself. Sensational. Rodeo, the Yakandanda Roos up against the Beechworth Bush Rangers here this afternoon. How will the Roos be feeling, Brooksy? Because... Yeah, they'll be feeling some pressure. I was talking to Homer earlier, and he's definitely feeling the pressure. So, but as a club, yeah, I think they're the team to beat this year, to be honest. I'm tipping them. They've got themselves a nice big ruckman. But, yeah, they'll be feeling some pressure at the moment. Now, Freaky, they were stiff, weren't they, in the COVID years? So I think it was... Which one was it that they won so many games yeah. and they're absolutely flying that unfortunately COVID hit and we lost the season? Yeah, 2021, I had a look back this uh, during the week. Look, I think they won the 13 games, lost one. And obviously COVID cut that season short. So, very unfortunate fortunate for the boys there uh, in that particularly for Yak and Dan. Obviously last year didn't make the finals but have bounced back this year as, as uh, Brooksy said, brought in Zachy Leach and a few other players as well and have shot back up to the to the top point in the ladder where they were a few years ago. I think it looks like the game might get started a little bit early here. Mm. Luke, you have scheduled for quarter past two but it looks like the, the players are about to walk out to their positions. Yeah, very interesting. Well, that'll, uh, that'll suit us. The waiting's the hard, hardest part, as Tom Petty once said. You just want to get the ball bounced, don't you, Brooks? You can get into it at this stage. Yeah, get into it. The boys will be excited. Big crowd here. Crowd's excited. Yeah, can't wait. Should be a cracking game. What are your thoughts on the Beechworth Bush Rangers? I reckon it's going to be one in the midfield. I reckon Yak might have an advantage with Big Leach, the ruckman they got on board, but Fendick, McIntosh in the middle, can't wait for that matchup. And, yeah, they're the two captains that can't wait to see them go at it. For sure. Now, the pre-game is brought to you by Regional Ag and Construction. Great sponsors here on the TDFL live stream. So thank you. to head, so it's going to be a great contest there in the middle of the ground. Yes, but Yak and Andaroos, their last flag was back in the year 2000, and the Beechworth Bush Rangers, last premiership in 2010, 13 years ago. We're almost set to go here. The opening term will be brought to you by Elders Rural, and uh, gee, we're looking forward to it. We can't wait. This is the first qualifying final at the Sandy Creek Reserve. Luke Brooks, Brad Freak and Luke Francis with you. The umpire out in the centre just checking to see if the ground is cleared. So down at the Pony Club in Freak, we've still got a few young tackers <laughs> yet to clear the ground. That's fine. I don't think anybody told them the game was going to start early. They're pretty keen for a kick, but I um, just wanted to touch on Luke here. Obviously, Cade Surrey is in for Beechworth. Looks like he's gone straight down to full forward as well for the Bush Rangers. And Big Leach, he started Sinar forward for Yakadana too, so a few surprises there for both teams. Yeah, he certainly is. This is it. The qualifying final. We're about
for the Roos, comes away, and he streams through the middle, and he gets his boot to ball, and he sends it up towards a 50-metre arc, on the ground at the moment, and then hacked off the ground, let's have a look who's down there, here's Elliot, searching for it, McMillan picks it up, and he's kicked the goal. Lockie McMillan, so what a start for the Roos, is it? It's a goal. So they kick a major freaky. They're off to a flying start. Yeah, beautiful roving there by Lock. Quick kick in and just Nick Donahue made the contest there. Ball fell out the back and as any small forward does, it's just in the right spot at the right time there. Lockie and be able to put the big first one through for the day. Yeah, went through the middle, which was good. Made the ground small, got it deep as quick as they could and put pressure under the Beechworth backs early in the game, which is what you want to do. So Yak and Dan are away. Six love on the commercial club scoreboard. Jacko Donk's time clock has gone 60 seconds unreal back in the middle here we go again Fendick went through McIntyre comes out and meets it and then Eaton had him Donaghy calling for a free kick and he will get it so Nick been a let's kick the 70 goals gets on the right foot swinging back McMillan might kick a second He's missed it. Then he kicks it behind. So the Roos peppering the goals here at the Kaganya Pony Club Ed early on. Hello to you, wherever you may be tuned in to the TDFL live stream this year. Again, Luke Brooks, the Chilton club legend and reigning premiership coach from last year. Freaky, the stat sensation on the Mac Jack stats. And Luke Francis here. He's Malsom in the fullback position. Good ball to Brent Ryan. Umpire said played on McMillan. He's been on fire early, long along the ground, Ellett. And now here's Jarrett, swinging around. Yeah, Kimmy Jarrett's got another one. Ruse off to a blinding start, Freaky. Yeah, they certainly are. Just really good intercept work there, just to put some pressure on the Beechworth defence. And as you said, McMillan started the game on fire. His third disposal already and just quick kick forward. But then Kimmy Jarrett, right place at the right time, able to snap a nice goal there for the Ruse. As Freaky said, three shots on goal for McMillan early. Very dangerous. Donnie, he looks like the big matchup down there forward. He's the dangerous one, I think. Big pressure on young Eaton. Yeah, so Beechworth, it goes without saying, they just need a settler. They just need to get their hands on the ball and, and get a forward freaky. Yeah, they certainly do. They just haven't got any territory at all. Yak and Dan are already the two inside 50s on the Mac Jack shed stat sheet. That's a tongue twist, twister as well, Ricky. I'm going to bugger that up. All, for, all final series. We know what you mean, Freaky. Now, get on your Paxi. So, ball back in the centre of this spectacular venue. Umpire coming in. So let's see what Beachy can do here. Can they settle? Here's Middleton. And then coming through, Malsom. And there's Huey Jarrett. Lee Dale over Rannett. Goes back for his second opportunity at the ball. And it's ripped out by Carey. There's Braden. McBurney. And Carey's going to get the free kick. Won the BNF in their premiership year of 2010 to Braden. And of course, co-coach with Tom Cartledge as they set it inside 50 to the Lockhart's Gap Road end. Ball at ground level. And then it looks like it's going to be tied up down there. There's Armstrong at the bottom of the pack. Nickname Lance, freaky. Not a bad, not a bad little nickname there. Yeah. Pick up a few other nicknames this week, Luke. She uh, Lance, they buggered a few things up, Brooksy. Didn't uh, end up pear-shaped, didn't it? <laughs> dear, oh dear. Yeah, here's... The ruse. There's O'Connell brought down by Cade Surrey. Brooksy, great to see Cade Surrey back in this team. Yeah, he's a massive in. He's a, probably the best backman in the comp. And yeah, he's huge for Beechworth. And Yakwa know he's out there. He always has a presence. Yeah. He used a fair bit of footy this year with a broken scaphoid. A wrist injury. Now there's Griska quickly on the boot. Out of defence. Here's Dolney with a chance to pick it up. In fact, that's Connor Stone. And then drop brought down in a big Zach Leach tackle. forward line that is a union hotel goal of the day 
Three from Petrala in the ruse. They are on the bounce. They are killing it, Freaky. Yeah, they certainly are. Three inside 50s for three goals in this game already. The, the ruse have just been really dominant. That forward pressure again, nice tackle, and a beautiful long goal there from Ethan Petrala. It started over the far wing over there. Big Leachy has a presence. Massive tackle. Few of the boys, a bit of push and shove over there, and he must have got a bit from the crowd because he gave them a bit of a wave as the ball went through for a goal. I've already seen him have one scuffle down there, Brooks. Even the, the last time Yak went forward, he was having a bit of a scuffle. The second time I've seen the run already go out to him, so it's good to see the coach knows you to keep a wrap on. So Yak and Dan will lead 19 to zilch on the commercial club scoreboard. Now, Jack O'Donk's time clock, we're not sure how long that's gone because it's actually frozen over on the scoreboard, the time clock. So we'll have to watch that one, Freaky. That's interesting. Here's Jimmy Lawson. Left his centre wing on the far side and then goes down the line with about a 25-metre kick. Turns it over, though, to Jai Middleton taking in front of Griner. So here's Jai. So they just need to steady the ship a little, the Bush Rangers. Short one, 20 metres. Just down at the uh, haunches. Here's Molson. Gets around and goes out wide to Connor Stone, so a couple of early touches for him, Freaky. Yeah, two already on the Mac Jack uh, stat sheet for Connor. And Connor wants to shift it up to the line. He's Armstrong a long way from home and goes forward. Nice to Pritchard, good ball movement. This is exactly what they need here, so let's have a look. Armstrong, then a long entry inside 50 for Lockhart's gap road in. Surrey at the back runs in and gets Pritchard's first. Kate kicks it, and that's exactly what they needed, Brooksy. Yeah, they did need that. That got it in a lot quicker then. That's what they've got to do, try and get some one-on-ones. Surrey's going to be pretty hard to beat one-on-one, -on -one, and Big Armstrong got involved a couple of times too, which is, is pretty crucial scenario forward for him. As we touched on, a couple of early touches for Connor Stone, one for Campbell Fendek on the Magic stat sheet, two um, inside 50s for Beechworth, for three for Yak and Danda. Three centre clearances, though, for Beechworth, so they are winning the ball out of the middle of the ground, and as Brooksy said, it is in the long ground, so if you can get the ball out of the middle, you can give yourself really good scoring options. Brad Freak. On the Mac Jack stats. Here we go back in the centre. So Middleton got a first hand to it. Fendick didn't have it, so the umpire's going to pay him the free kick. It's going to come back, no advantage. Great player, this guy. Here goes Campbell, the captain of the Beechworth Bush Rangers. Low ball inside 50. Stevens on to Brent Surrey. Griska comes in to help out for the Roos. Ball at ground level. Players fighting away for it. Great contest. Surrey. McCormick, here's O'Connell, Griner, got it out, and then spits one to McBurney, he gets brought down, and the bush rain is over him, and we're going to have another stoppage, Freaky. Yeah, we certainly are, as we touched on, a couple of early touches for Ben McIntosh as well, him in the midfield looks like he's going to get some pretty close attention from the Beechworth boys. Probably got about five on the Japo Donks time clock again, it's frozen on the scoreboard over there, 19 to 6 on the commercial club scoreboard. The ruse up, Freaky. Yeah, I was just going to say, I've got to read the time off there, Luke. You've got the live stream going. We're just about a minute behind that one, that's all. Beautiful, mate. It looks like it's gone seven. So I was a little bit behind. There's Fendick. Lawson to O'Connell. And Williams just wants to hack it forward. Here's McBurney. Brought down on a strong tackle by Dolney. Fendick again. He's got his hands on the footy. Bouncing ball. And now Pritchard. And here goes Chris, because he's been good for the Roos, and he comes off half-back. He's had one bounce, now he's had two. What can he spot up? Tries to take you five, plays six on the commercial club scoreboard. Chapo Dong's time clock has gone about eight and a half, I reckon. Let's go to you, Brooksy. They need to do something about that matchup. McMillan's had four shots on goal, now he's been everywhere. And this is the midfield. Co-coach Tom Cartlidge has gone to... A, ..a tag in there as well. As you touched on there, Brooks, he's had the four touches. Still disposes all four shots a goal in the Mac Jack shed stat sheet. He's been far in that forward half. Four inside fifties as well for Yak and Dan. They had the five shots a goal, so having shots a goal pretty easily every time they do go forward at the moment. Yeah, great work, Freaky. Special comments by Luke Brooks for Aubrey Wodonga, MG. Final round in the Ovens of Murray today. Final round in the Hume Footy League. Footy finals and the Spring Carnival just around the corner, hey? Unreal, you can't beat it. Sun shining. I'm expecting 19 degrees here this afternoon. We'll probably reach that. Let's have a look. Williams in Middleton. They do battle. Free kick given to Williams. And now he wants to drive it forward inside 50. Leach at the front. Oh, coming out. Was Griner hit the deck. Leach goes again. Oh, just gets rid of Belch. He says, get out of my way. To Zach. 
Hands it off, don't tell me that's McMillan again. Oh, oh, oh gee. And it's been touched across the line. So one behind. Mark at about 48, and Campbell's been great early for his Bush Rangers. Oh, just turn it over to Griska, who's been fantastic, Freaky. Yeah, he has been. He's run off the halfback line, been really strong to start this game for the Roos. And Deegan Dolney with it. So about 60 out here, Lockhart's Gap Road in broadcast side. And might have... Uh, Spounder might have caught it out, did he? It's hard to know at this stage. I think he might have said he's juggled it over the line. I'm, uh, not, I'm not quite sure. He did juggle it, but footy he might have grabbed it before he went over the line. Very good. Let's have a look here. Boundary umpire throws it back into play. Opening term has Brent Surrey. Middleton tried to get hands to it. McInnes just hacked it off the ground. He's Christrick again. He's been unreal. Out to Ben McIntosh, and he goes with a short one to Yui Jarrett. Yui turns around, puts the foot down, gets it on the left boot, sends it towards the Donaghy direction. Well done, Eaton, to get back there. Donaghy fighting hard at ground level. Eaton goes again. He wins it back. Hey, freaky, they are on. Yeah, they certainly are, the Yak and Nanda boys. Six inside fifties on the Mac Jack Shed stat sheet. I thought Jordy Eaton, looks he did all everything right there, just didn't get the ball out of bounds. Yeah, had to get it out of bounds there. Obviously a young fellow, just got to get it out. Probably his first senior final, whereas Donnelly was smart. Kept it in play and then, yeah, finished off. He's a very good player. Yes, yeah, so what a goal to Donaghy. And don't worry about the early nerves for the Yak and Nanda Roos. They've come to play in the first qualifying final. Stevens out of the middle with a long ball for the Bushies. Heading inside 50 to the Lockhart's Gap Road end. Let's have a look. Marshall got spun around. Lingham sees it across the chalk. It's gone through for another behind. So 32 plays 7 here. Commercial Club scoreboard. Japo Donk's time clock. It's probably gone about 13 minutes. Luke Brooks for Aubrey Wodonga, MG. Brad Freak on the Mac Jack. Shed stats. Out wide. Trying to find McInnes. Ball's gone out of bounds, Freaky. Yeah, on the Mac Jack's shed stats sheets. We touched on Ben McIntosh had the three disposals early. Yui Jarts had a couple. Campbell Fendix up to four for the Beechworth side. played in their last premiership in 2000 and wherever you may be tuned in this afternoon to the TDFL live stream so Lawson goes wide so the Rooster got it half back flank came from Marshall and then back to Lawson just inside the defensive 50 yard to McInnes got him on the half volley he wants to come wide here to Yui Jarrett. What are you seeing, Brooks? He will be with MG. I just seen Surrey's come behind the ball for a little bit to try and get a bit of control of this game. They just need to get their hands on the footy beach with to slow this game down a bit. On the Mac Jack shed stat sheet, as, as uh, Brooks has said, they're six inside 50. Ball goes inside 50, bouncing ball, Lingham came out, second attempt at it, scoops it up, and 
He's trying to get it over the top to Lee Dahl again. The ball has gone out of bounds. Yep. So Yak and Dander have lost uh, just the one game this year. That was way back in round nine, mid-June, when the Kiwi Sandy Creek Hawks got them by four goals that day. Since then, the Roos have strung together nine successive wins, nine straight. Great form coming into finals. Ball back into play. Dolney picks it up. And James O'Connell pounces upon him. O'Connell's going to get it. Dolney, I should say, is going to get it. And then fires it in. A big fist away by George. Marshall, I should say. And then Petrala. Look at that for a kick by Ethan. Goes with a long one out towards Ryder. Center wing on the far side. Ball's gone out of bounds. I mean, we'll have a boundary throw in, Brad Freak. Yeah, Beachwood have had their opportunities. They're up to seven inside 50s on the Mac Jack shed stat sheet, but they just haven't been able to find targets. When uh, Yak and Nana have gone for it, they've looked a lot quicker and their ball movement's really troubled, as, as Brooks really pointed out there. They've thrown Kate Sarah behind the ball to try and stop that, that quick ball movement from Yak and Nana. Yeah, so the Roos with five on the board. Beachy one. McBurney to McIntosh, just feeds him and then sends it inside 50. Well run, Kate Sarri getting back. That's what you were talking about, Brooksy. Kate Sarri just getting behind the ball. Yeah, but all of a sudden now yeah, they've got nothing forward because they've got four forwards at the moment. They put two behind, so. And Armstrong. Out to Ellett. He's got Jeffries on, gets him. And Jeffries wants to steer it inside 50 for Lockhart's gap road end. Ball hit the ground. Marshall. Just a... out of bounds here now. It's going to be on here. Yeah, it is. It is going to be on. Because Grisk is down. Cartledge just got in. What were your thoughts, Freaky? Yeah, it certainly will tie from our point of view. And then obviously the, the Yak and Dander boys certainly didn't like it, as you can see. the plenty of demonstrations there. It's still going, and there's a few boys coming. Get a bit out of control. The umpires, I think, should get the ball to someone. Just get the game going on, mm. I think, here. Yeah, I agree. Brooksy, uh, th this can happen on the crowd side, can't it? Yeah, everyone gets a bit caught up over here, but it was definitely a big hit from Tommy Carley, so Jared probably done the right thing and stuck up for his mate, and yeah, they need just to get back playing footy now, but... Yeah, I agree, Freaky. Just, just throw it up, just pour it in. The players will soon... I guess the only probably problem with it now is as if the, the player, Gresker, is in the area, they might want to get him off the ground rather than... while well, the trainers are there, rather than play the game around the trainers. You're right. Yeah, first team brought to you by Elders Rural. Commercial club scoreboard sees the Roos up 32 to 7. Chapo Donk's time clock. Freddy, what, what do you reckon, mate? Yeah, uh, just obviously just waiting for, for Greskin to get off the, the ground. He's probably going to be a bit of a loss for the Yak and Dander Brooks. He obviously, he's, he started the game quite well. He's been huge from halfback. He's run. He's probably been the best player on the ground. Just about him and McMillan. I reckon we've probably gone about 16 and a half to 17 and on the Chapo Donk's time clock. As we said, the clock's actually frozen on the scoreboard. Petrala for the ruse. Is Yui Jarrett searching for it at ground level. And then got past Molson. Went to the half four line. Here's Donaghy. Takes it in the hands. Now what's he got? He wants to chip it over the top to Lee Dale, who's run forward. Good running, Luke Brooks. Cam Fenwick seems down behind play here as well. I'm not sure yeah. what happened there. Didn't see it, but he's down too. Yeah, he is. He's catching his breath, Freaky. Yeah, I certainly didn't see that one either. I was watching the players. It was just really good play there from Nick Donahue, I thought, as well. Just waited for Lee Dale to run into the space. Obviously, a couple of key back there for Beachworth. Just waited for the right option and found him. Good player, this guy. Class act is Lee Dale. He wants to steer it back. And there's another one for the Roos. That's their sixth. 38 plays seven on the commercial club scoreboard. Chapo Dong's time clock has probably gone about 18, we reckon. First term here. Here's Luke Brooks for Aubrey Wodonga, MG. Uh, Fenwick's got himself back up. Looks like he's got a head to the middle, but he doesn't look anywhere near right at the moment. So Beechworth, we hope that he can get up and going because, uh, yeah, they haven't started very well here. As you touched on, uh, Brooks, he obviously they were going to go quite, look like they were doing a close run with roll with Ben McIntosh. He's only had the four disposals on the Mac Jack Shed stat sheet. Do you think, because they probably need a little bit more run in this game at the moment, Beechworth, they might look to loosen that, I guess, tag, if, if anything? Yeah, Cartledge might go back to half back and see if we get a bit more leg speed in there and go head to head. Back in the middle, Brent Surrey to Stead. And then Stead just quickly on the boot. Goes to the half forward line. Houston got a fist to it. Here's Williams. Just a hurried hand pass forward here. Cartledge now picks it up to Tom and then puts it on the boot and sends it to the half forward flank. Garland just escorts the ball out of bounds. Held it out there also. And we will have 
the boundary through, throwing. What a venue it is, eh? It just looks sensational, doesn't it, Friggy, from our vantage point up here? Oh, it's, we've got the best seats in the house, I'd say, boys. It's a yeah, beautiful surface, beautiful conditions. Just a great day to be out here at finals. Absolutely. Ellett, the ground level, McBurney over him. In fact, that's McIntosh. Uh, McBurney over Ellett, so Ellett will get the ball. Let's have a look. He wants to drive it inside 50, deep to the pocket, bouncing in front of Kate Surrey. And also Marshall Ball's gone out of bounds, Freaky. Yeah, Beecher have had more inside 50s in this first quarter. Nine inside 50s to eight on the Mac Jack shed stat sheet, but just haven't been able to find too many options when they do go forward. Their ball movement going in probably hasn't been as as they would like it to start off this game. If they can clear that up, they're getting plenty of opportunities, just need to find the targets a bit more. Williams got rid of Middleton in the ruck. Cartledge goes again. Lee Dale brings him down in a strong tackle. So Beechworth put together another solid season. 14 wins, 4 losses. Their losses coming via Yak and Danda in round 6s. Or well, round 6, I should say, in 16. And also the Hawks in round 7 and 18. Having said that, their average losing margin for those 4 games was close to 11 points. So they don't fold the Bush Rangers. They fight to the death. At the moment, they trail by 31 points here in the opening term on first qualifying final day. And again, the ball is tied up here. Yeah, Brooksy, uh, your guys here tomorrow. The Swannies up against Barnawatha. Yeah, it should be a cracking game. Traditional rival, so yeah, can't wait to get here tomorrow and have another look. Hopefully it's another cracking day. Your boys train this morning? Yeah, the boys had a run this morning. Seniors had a light run and the seconds had a, a bit longer run because they've obviously got the week off this week. They finished on top, so. Yeah, beautiful. Are many of them here today watching? Uh, not sure. Down the line, 45 metres probably, bouncing ball, and it's going to go out right of centre wing on the far side, Freaky. Yeah, if we're doing a true Aubrey netball update in the games that have already been played today, in the under-13s, Yakandan to 32, Thaguna 28, in the under-15s, Chilton 39 to Swadonga Saints 36, and in the under-17s, Barney 40 to Talangada 37, and in the C-grade netball that was already always already in game today, Chilton won that game as well, 39 to 36. Yeah, beautiful. And over on the far side again here, another stoppage. Let's see who can win the clearance on this occasion. Zach Leach and Stevens in the ruck, ground level. And again, it's found the chalk here, Brooksy. So a few stoppages in the last few moments. There is. Yak and Dan have definitely got their matchups right down back. Beechworth finding hard to score, plenty of inside 50s, but yeah, can't hit the scoreboard at the moment. Yeah, the Duns, Twin City Cranes, TDFL, first game. They look, they look fantastic out there. Yeah, it's a great brand, the Bushies brand. There's Leach, Lee Dale, off the ground by him. Swinging around Griner, gets it to the top of the goal square. Ball bouncing, Jeffries mops up, wants to come to Brent Ryan. Short one to Kane Scott, so they're inside D50 here. At the Kuganya Pony Club end. This is Kane, just goes to that. So what's Artie Griner going to do? Oh, probably just hooked it a little too much for Donaghy. Ellett. He picks it up on the second attempt. Gets it to Connor Stone, weaving through traffic. Sends it to the middle of the ground. Bouncing ball here. Leach again. Thornton came in. There's Dolney. Out to Stead. Wide to Kate Surrey. And he gets it on the boot and sends it down towards the half flank here for the Bush Rangers. 
and then Armstrong came out, Garland met him, Griska there also, and we're going to have a throw in, Freaky. Yeah, on the Mac Jack shed stat sheet, 10 inside 50 for Yak and Dander, four, a 9 for Beechworth, then McIntosh up to the 5 disposals for the Roos as well. Yeah, Japo Donk's time clock is probably gone over 23 and a half here. Again, our time clock frozen on the scoreboard. Here's Campbell Fendick, the long ball to the pocket. Bouncing now. Oh, running onto it. Armstrong kicks a goal. So fortuitously there. They've got the bounce, the Bushies. They go to 13. They trail 13. On the commercial club scoreboard, uh, Brooksy, uh, a bit of luck there for the Bushies. Yeah, they probably got lucky. Yakka actually set up pretty well behind the ball there. They had the extra, but the bad bounce going their way and a good bounce for Beechworth, and Armstrong runs into a much-needed goal for Beechworth. Campbell Fendick up to five disposals as well on the forty uh, on the Mad Jack Shed stat sheet. Five centre clearances in this game as well for Beechworth. That's one area of the game they've really dominated that, with Yakka and not being able to get a centre clearance yet. So if they can get on top of that, get some quick ball moving into their forward 50, they might be able to hit the scoreboard a bit more regularity. Yeah, very good. Well done, Freaky. On the Mac Jack stats, back in the centre, Middleton, and also Leach. Fendick, he's been good, Campbell. Two centre half forward, Brett Surrey in a one-on-one. -on -one. Here's Cade Surrey, picks it up, handles out to Belchie. Belchie hurriedly on the boot. Pritchard, not brought down in a tackle. And the umpire will call for it here. Opening term. Brought to you by Elders Rural. Great sponsors of the TDFL live stream. Luke Brooks, the children. To ground by Lawson and also McInnes. Rightio. A few numbers around the pill here. Arc of the 50. Up it goes. Yui Jarrett, Brent Surrey, probably a high fend off here against Yui, is it? It is, and it will go to Brent Surrey. He wants to send it in the Pritchard direction. Good fist over the back from Houston. Here's Lingham. He's done a few good things in his opening term. And now he's caught. He just get his handball away. Yes, he did. And the ball's gone out of bounds again, Freaky. Yeah, just really good pressure there from the Beechworth forwards. They've just been able to keep it locked in there uh, in that particular... That really had too much of in this first quarter books are just those repeat entries and repeat forward pressure. Uh, it's coming out far too easily. So if you are Tom Cartledge or Braden Kerry at quarter time, Brooks here, what would the instructions be? Just got to bring some more pressure around the ground. Yak just look a little bit quicker than him at the moment, so just got to try and slow their run down and try and get a bit back on their terms. Let's have a look. Here goes the boundary umpire. Stevens and Leach. Leach. And then back at ground level. Stacks on, and again, another ball up, Freaky. Yeah, I think Yak will try and do this for the last little bit of this quarter. Just try and kill a bit of time, just get them into quarter time with that four, with that 25-point lead. A nice little buffer they've built themselves. Don't want to concede one late here. No, you're right. They'd be happy with this. Yeah, there's a free kick. Just as you said that, Freaky, there's a yeah. free kick given away to Stevens. Yeah, just big Zachy Leach just gave him a big push in the back there, and I'm not too sure. Brooks, do you have the leg from here? I uh, don't know. Don't know much about the kid. But he's a pretty talented kid, so yeah, hopefully he can go back and beat with really need this one just before quarter time. Yeah, so here's Liam Stevens. It's all, man. By the time he strikes this, I reckon he'll be just inside 50 here to a Lockhart's Gap Road head. Far side of the ground. Shooting at the Bush Rangers third. Such an important kick in the opening term here. Let's see what Liam can do. He's latched onto it. It's going, and it's gone through for one minor score. So 30 plays, 14 here on the Commercial Club scoreboard. Japo Dog's time clock has gone probably close to 28 as we work out towards the break here. O'Connell. And the ball's gone out of bounds. What a throw in, Freaky. Yeah, a few stoppages here in the opening turn, that is for sure. Yeah, we have. It's been a probably big... big Here come the Roos again, they're streaming through the middle. Now Griner at the back, the infringe there, the umpire said play on, I think that's okay. Connor Stone's got it, he's brought to ground, and the umpire's going to call for it. So close to the quarter time break here. 
Yeah, there's a whistle down the ground. What's blood, happening here? Looks like a blood rule there. With uh, Looks like it's Nick Houston coming off the ground. Looks like he's got a bit of blood coming from his nose. Yeah, good pick up, Freggy. So Nick coming to the bench. He's going to be replaced by Ethan Petrala. So the Bush Rangers can ill afford to give away a major here. Pony Club Ed Middleton. Lee Dale again. He's been busy in the opening quarter. High ball. Connor Stone bounces before him. Got a shocker. Griner try to tap it down in front. Crowd oh, oh. calling for ball. Umpire doesn't want to bar it. And again, we'll have another stoppage. Obviously, I just realised then, like former teammates, Jai Middleton and uh, Zach Leach, obviously with the Wayne Grader Magpies. Yeah, you're right, Freaky. Both now playing their trade for obviously Beechworth and Yak and Dan, respectively. That's right. To the big men of the TDFL, Dale again. Fendick, did he hold on too long? Yes, he did. So what can they make of this, the ruse? Hamble's off to James O'Connell. Short one. Good to McIntosh. Gee, this would sting, Brooksy. Uh, Mick Millen's coming off too. That could be a big blow for Yak and Andy. Looks very sore in the way mm. off. He's, been, he's had a huge first quarter. Yeah, he certainly doesn't look good there, Locke. It looks like he probably maybe a rolled ankle or something like that. That's what it looks like to me. But this is a massive kick here for Yak and Dan. Obviously, Ben McIntosh, the captain, get themselves that 30-point buffer going into quarter time. would be huge. Here he goes, Ben. One of the favourites for the Barton medal, which is on Monday night. Has he got the legs? Yes, he has. What a goal. That is a ripper from Ben McIntosh. That is a union goal of the day, Brooksy, an absolute beauty. It was a great kick. It looked like the two Beechworth blokes actually shipping each other out of the way on the goal line there. Big Jai looked like he was all over it and not sure who it was, but they just pushed him straight in the back. I was about to say the same thing, Brooksy. Just watching from our vantage point, it looks like they almost ran into each other. It was, but I mean, obviously, probably a good thing and a bad thing as a coach. Both blokes trying to be eager to get that touch, but just timing just a little bit off there. And obviously, Ben McIntosh on the Mac Jack shed stat sheet up to six disposals in his first quarter. He's been really strong for the, the Roos. Gee, they're looking good. Yak, 44 plays, 13, of course, the winner to advance and take on the Kiwa Sandy Creek Hawks next Saturday for a spot in the big one. That was Stead, McIntosh, out to Yui Jarrett, wants to take a few Bush Rangers on, oh wow, <laughs> wonderful play. And then a forward entry here to the Pony Club, Ed Leach. Takes the mark. They're on a roll, Brad Freak. Yeah, they certainly are. Just again, just Yui Jarrett just used his strength and broke away from Just missed it on quarter time, but they've got a big break. They're going well, the Roos. 45 plays 13. 7 3 45 plays 2 1 13 on the Commercial Club scoreboard as we get to the first break. That quarter was brought to you by Elders Rural. This is the TDFL live stream. We'll take a break and be back on the other side. We'll help you get the job done. We'll make your job a smooth one. Dance Twin City Cranes. For your semis, riggers, spotters, cranes, safety is our second name. You're looking pretty with Dunst Twin City, no job's out of reach. Rig it, lift it, move it, shift it, no fuss, talk to us. We'll help you get the job done, we'll make your job a smooth one. Dunst Twin City, cranes. CADMAC want your machinery to keep working as hard as you do. So... As you're gearing up for the busy season, now is the time to stock up on your machinery oil and net wrap. For a limited time, get a free cap when you buy 20 litres of any New Holland oil. Or get a free jacket with every pallet of New Holland net wrap or bale twine. These offers are only available at CADMAC and while stocks last. CADMAC, helping you grow for life. Season C's apply. Finer Embroidery is in the fabric of our community. 
make any logo on anything so your business can proudly present themselves well. Embroidery that adds that personal touch that doesn't break the bank. Join the finer embroidery community today. Proudly supporting the TDFL. Drag it, drop it, crop it, play it, write it, space it, and erase it. Drag Need a computer that won't crash? Need your Wi-Fi turbocharged? Need better data backup? Whatever you need your computer to do, Wangaratta Computers will help you do it better. Because that's what we do best. And we can do it in store or at your home. So get your tech working better at wangaratacomputers.com.au. Play it, write it, space it, and erase it. CADMAC want your machinery to keep working as hard as you do. So, as you're gearing up for the busy season, now is the time to stock up on your machinery oil and net wrap. For a limited time, get a free cap when you buy 20 litres of any New Holland oil. Or get a free jacket with every pallet of New Holland net wrap or bale twine. These offers are only available at CADMAC and while stocks last. CADMAC, helping you grow for life. Season C's apply. Finer Embroidery is in the fabric of our community. Any logo on anything so your business can proudly present themselves well. Embroidery that adds that personal touch that doesn't break the bank. Join the Finer Embroidery community today. Proudly supporting the TDFL. We'll help you get the job done, we'll make your job a smooth one. Dunn's Twin City Cranes. For your semis, riggers, spotters, cranes. Safety is our second name. You're looking pretty with Dunn's Twin City. No job's out of reach. Rig it, lift it, move it, shift it. No fuss, talk to us. We'll help you get the job done, we'll make your job a smooth one. Guns Twin City Cranes! He's leading 7 3 45. Now, Freaky, we did see the goal umpires come over here towards the commentary box and the scorers box, and they actually said uh, that the Beechworth Bush Rangers should have one more point. So we believe the score should be 2 2 14. Yeah, that's, um, I think you're spot on there, Lukey. The two boundary umpires came over because obviously the, uh, the, the, the scoreboard and scoreboard and tender things sitting next to us. So they're 2 2 14, not 2 1 13. Oh, Still a long way behind Yak and Nanda at the moment, Lukey. Yeah, you're absolutely right, mate. Now, let's have a look at the Brian Unthank Real Estate Quarters Best for the opening turn. Yeah, I'd have to go past... Too hard to go past Lockie McMillan in that first quarter. Had the six disposals, and he kicked a couple of goals. Probably a bit of a shame as well for Yak and Nanda. He did come off the ground with a what looked like maybe a rolled ankle, and, mm. I, and we just ironed him off there at quarter time. He had his boot off. Brooksy with his keen eyes saw that he's a bit blown up his ankle, so hopefully he'll be right to get back out there. I think he, I think I can see his foot down there getting strapped up at the moment so yeah. fingers crossed he can get back out there if you have a look at the Mac Jack Shed stat sheet for that first quarter the team stats inside 50 is for Yak and Dander 11 for Beechworth but the centre clearance is Beechworth are well and truly on top 5 in that area to 1 for, for Yak and Dander if we have a look at the, at the player's stats, uh, Ben McIntosh is up to seven disposals. He leads our stats board. Six for Lee Dale, six for Lockie McMillan, six for Campbell Fendick for the Beechworth Rangers. Yeah, we're well, just mentioning towards the quarter time break there, Brooksy. They couldn't afford to give up another one, the Ruse, and then McIntosh, of course, took that mark and then had a shot on goal and kicked a beauty, didn't he? And, and that sort of stung the Bush Rangers right on the break. Yeah, it was great leadership. He's been super. He's had a tag, but everyone in the league knows he's, he's running first rate, so he's just going to run cartilage into the ground. He's going to try to anyway. But, uh, yeah, he's been crucial to them. They've got their matchups right down back. They, they need a lift. I'm looking forward to a response from Beechworth. Kerry done all the talking then at quarter time, and I'd imagine birds and trying to fight the The 
aspirations paint scoreboard at the moment. 45, we believe it's 14, it's showing 13 on the electronic scoreboard over there. So we do believe that the goal umpires come up and had a chat to the scorer's box, but that electronic scoreboard yet to be changed. We'll just have to watch that. OK, back in the middle. Here we go. Second term of the Sandy Creek Reserve. Beautiful. Good throughout in. And we're about to go. Second quarter again, brought to you by NZ Aubrey, Williams and Middleton. And then McBurney gets the handball out to Lee Dale. Had a great first term. Tristan Stead brings him down. Up by set play on. That was interesting. Is Campbell Fendick. Overran it. Molson got it out wide. Lawson and Kane Scott see the ball across the line on the far side, just right of centre wing there, Freaky. Yeah, I think the uh, Beechworth fans and Beechworth players probably could find themselves a little bit unlucky there. Just a couple of instances, really good tackle there by Stead that went unrewarded, which I thought was holding the ball and then holding the man on Kemble Fendig there, which wasn't paid, but that's, that's what happens in footy. Just got to ride the bumps and keep going through it. Dolney gets it up to Fendig. She's getting some touches in this footy game. Oh, massive fist from the back by Marshall. Now here's Elliot. Swings around, right foot. Garland. Probably dropped what he should have taken. Stevens. Try to get around Linger. Garland again. Ball's gone out of bounds and the umpire will call it in. So Garland probably should have taken that mark, but that can happen. Early in files, a bit of nerves, Brooksy. Yeah, definitely some nerves. A bit of voice around him would help. Just let him know. Just take it easy. He had plenty of time. Brooksy for Aubrey Wodonga, MG. Lee Dale. Oh, Surrey got him high. No free kick, Brooksy. That's amazing. We had a good angle on that. If that's not high, you won't get many here today. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll, absolutely. I'll, I'll right say that, that poor umpire, he was on the front there behind it, but I wouldn't uh, one of the other ones up the ground might have saw it. Williams, Cartledge. He goes again. Ball the ground level. Umpire's going to call it. Yeah, so the umpire just blindsided there. Can happen. Now, Freaky, we're going to see your fan club back here for the final series. Oh, it depends if I want to bring him out or not, Lukey. Here goes Connor Stone breaking away. And James a goal for the Bush Rangers. 45, plays 20. So it's a 25-point margin on the NZ, I should say, Inspirations Paint scoreboard. Second turn brought to you by NZ Aubrey Brooksy. Yeah, just a basic chest mark from Garland going down. As I said, a bit more voice around the contest, helping him out. And then a free kick miss, and then yeah, a much needed goal from Beechworth. Just rides your luck a little bit there, don't you, don't you Brooksy, if you're Beechworth? Obviously, as a touched on there, just get that repeat entry and be able to get in and get that goal on board. And as you said, as you said there as well, Brooksy and Lukey, just much needed first goal of the, the second quarter for Beechworth just to get himself some momentum back in this game. As Lockie Millen makes his way back onto the ground, he looks very proppy as he comes back out there, but uh, we'll see how he goes, see how much longer he can stay out there. Yeah, he was so good in the opening moments and his hands on the peel and having a few shots at the Pony Club end or to the right of screen. This is the TDFL Finals for 2023. In the middle of the Graham Middleton. Stone again. Long towards the arc of the 50. Whistle. Holding free kick. Garland's going to get it. Beachy crowd not happy. Underneath us. Wants to come wide. Stone versus Dale. Here's Elliot. And ball out in front of the interchange gates, Brad Freak. Yeah, Connor Stone started the second term really well on the Mac Jack Shed statue. He's had two disposals already. Ah, oh, beautiful. What are you seeing around the contest, Brooksy? Uh, Beechworth a lot better around the contest at the moment, which I had to lift. Luke Brooks with us. Surrey, seeing it across the line. <laughs> the trailer had a good look at Surrey. Both made eye contact. Brooksy, what do you got so there, Beachworth to bring an extra up to the ball, which has let Garland behind the ball by himself. Ah, beautiful. Great intel. Middleton, that's why he's here. Luke Brooks, inside 50. Let's have a look. Bouncing ball. Armstrong went beyond him. So to Logan Martin. Stevens got it off to Kate Surrey. 
Roos had him. McInnes fires a handball out. This is Maslin. And smell it. And don't the Gucci crowd love it. And we will have a boundary throw in there, Freaky. Yeah, I've locked Stevens in that forward half for Beachworth. I think he's done some really good stuff. He's been really lively to start this second term. Looks like he might be able to give him a little bit of spark in that forward half that they need. We'll go around the grounds very surely. Here's the boundary throw in. Middleton, the big man. Bendick. Read it beautifully to Stone. And off to Dolney. Rolling ball inside 50. Stevens. Ling him over the top of him. Might have to get rid of this, Stevens. Umpire's called it. Yeah, a bit of argy-bargy. Armstrong goes to ground. He's having words with Guinness. And is it free kick given, is there? Yeah, there was. It was. I'm not too sure who was between the, the Yak and Dan, the player, but just dragged... Yeah, um, McInnes. Yeah, McInnes just dra uh, dragged Armstrong to the ground, well and truly off the play. The actual umpire, again, was it was in front of him. It was behind him, I should say. You would never saw it. So the umpire, 50 metres up the ground, saw it clear as day and paid the right free kick there. Yeah, gee, the Ruse coaching staff wouldn't, let, wouldn't like this at all, Brooks. He said this could let the Rangers back in at this point. Yeah, they've had a lift around the midfield stone and Fendick have started his quarter beautifully, which is exactly what they needed. Here's Liam Stevens. So he had a shot to the Lockhart Scout Road end. This one to the Pony Club end, and he nails it. Well done, Liam. 45 plays, 26 on the Inspirations Paint scoreboard. Japo Dogs time clock has gone about five and a bit here. Second term, Freaky. Yeah, as Brooksy just said, there's Stone and Fendick are the two that are lifted in this second quarter for Beechworth. Connor Stone up to three disposals on the Mac Jack Shed stat sheet. Campbell Fendix had the two in this quarter, which gives him eight for the game. So Fendix probably been Beechworth's best so far today, but those two have certainly lifted in this second term. Yeah, so back to a 19-point margin. So as we said, they don't go away, the Bush Rangers. They hang in there. They keep fighting. First qualifying final day, TDFL live stream. Hope you're enjoying the action. Luke Brooks, Brad Freak and Luke Francis here at this wonderful venue. Back in the centre, Leach, McIntosh to Lawson. Great footy. Here goes Jimmy. What can he spot up? Low ball going in to Griner. Great footy, Luke Brooks. There was a mix-up at the start of that bounce there. Beechworth had two on this far, on the closest wing to the crowd here and end up with a spare out the other side for Yakadana. So pretty bad from Beechworth there. Simple simple error. First inside 50 for Matt Jack. Sheds in this quarter for Yakadana as well. And have the shot on goal straight away. Here goes Artie Griner. Oh, that's a shocker. So he shanked that one badly. And that one's gone out of bounds. Brooks, he won't like that. No, he won't be happy with that if he watches that one back. That's missed everything by a fair margin. Yeah, no, that's it. I think he was lucky to hit his foot, was he? <laughs> In the end he was, wasn't he? Rolling, here's Lee Dahl. Now what can he set up? Very classy player, this guy. Here's his delivery, left foot, swings it back. Carey under it, Griner over the top, ball goes to ground. And the umpire is going to call for it. Freaky? Yeah, and a couple of three early touches for Connor Stone in this the second quarter, as we touched on. He's been out really lively for him. Only two inside 50s for Yak and Dana in this second term to start this quarter. Yeah, and the second term is brought to you by NZ Aubrey. Whistle, shepherding here. It's going to go the way of Zach Leach. Middleton not happy, Brooksy. Nah, he's, he's not happy. Steve's giving away the free kick. He doesn't seem happy, but clearly Leach was the ruckman down there, so yeah, it was always a free kick. His big body wouldn't guess intimidate uh, defenders yeah. when you're that close to goal and you know he's going to throw his weight around a little bit defenders are probably bracing for him a little bit and you know probably one of those free kicks the umpires can spy a million miles away when you get a play with someone so big like Zach Leach this would get it back out to 25 Zach got it it's a floater he's missed it so it's gone through for one behind there so 46 plays 26 20 points the margin on the Inspirations Point scoreboard. Japo Donk's time clock. Okay. It's gone about eight, has a freaky second term. Yep. Yeah, apologies for a little inaccurate on the time clock. It's not working on the scoreboard here. We're working off a, a phone in the background. It's Braden Carey. Thought he got legged in the end. The umpire caught it. And Braden. Hambles off to Molson and then Molson goes to true centre wing. Good kick. 
to Stead. Over the top now to Alessandro Belchi. Belchi goes with a 25 metre kick fighting Middleton. So that was good ball movement, but they're very wide here, Brooksy. They play on now. Here goes Middleton. Jai, wobbly ball to the top of the goal square. Armstrong in front. Ground level. The Ruse through Petrala. Boys under pressure. Just got his kick away here. This might be out in the full. Bounces just inside the field of play. Ellis, left foot. McIntosh is back there and takes the mark. And they play on quickly. Let's see how they go on the rebound here. Transition footy. Here's O'Connell to Lee Dale. Takes it in front of McCormick. Just right of centre wing. Far side. Short one over the top. I don't know who that was intended for. It's for Griner. Kick wasn't great. Kate Surrey came out. Ball still in play. Dale goes off the ground. Lawson got hands to it. Back to Dale. That was very lucky. Then goes inside 50. Well done. Playing in front. Braden Carey in the back line. He wants to switch it quickly. To fend it. So this game's broken up a little here, Brooksy. It has a pretty set behind the ball, but here they've got Leach and Garland, who's about to get it out behind the ball. So they're set up pretty well, Yak. Luke Brooks for Aubrey Wodonga, MG. He's Belchie. Alessandro over the top to Connor Stone. Stone in two minds. Feeds McCormick. McCormick sends it forward to Armstrong. Just ahead of him. Liam tried to knock it back to Logan. Ball's gone out of bounds in the back pocket. Far side at the Pony Club. They're running this inside forward 50 there, B. Rolling ball, and Logan and also Armstrong there, sit across the chalk. So beautiful day here, as we said. Sandy Creek Reserve. Good crowd in. Tomorrow is Chilton versus Barney. In the ELM final. Sudden death. Martin. From the back pocket, Kate Surrey. Sees it out in front of Marshall, and again another throw in Freaky. Yeah, and that game tomorrow between Chilton and Barney obviously being broadcast live on 1494 2AY as well. So you get the, the live stream the same way you're getting this live stream at the moment, or you can listen to it on the wireless if, if that's what, out in the garden tomorrow, I guess, with the, yeah, uh, the, beautiful, roses. With the beautiful weather that we've got. That's it. That's right, Stevens down in front. Here's Surrey burning away. Low ball. Connor Stone down at his feet. McKinnis has got him. And again out of bounds now, McMillan, where's he up to now, Freaky, can you spot him? Yeah, he's still down there at full forward, Brooks, he doesn't look very comfortable all around, does he? He's very proppy still, he's gone deep, but yeah, I don't know how he's going to see the game, and he looks very sore. Yeah, so unfortunate. Great to see him back out there, just the same. As Freaky said, had his boot off a quarter time, his ankle had blown up a little, he was showing a couple of the supporters, but they've taped him up and he's back out there, which is great for him. Yeah, I don't think he was going to miss it, Luke, talking to him through the week, he was pretty pumped to get out there and play there today, so I don't think, it, you'd have to chop his leg off to stop him getting out there today, I reckon. Yeah, he's one of your good mates, Freaky, isn't he? He is one of mine, played cricket with him at, at Belvoir, so he's played for a very long time off. Lee Dale brought to ground, it's going to go to Stevens. so he's getting busy, Stevens. long kick, Goal square. Oh, good mark, Lingham. Well done on the last line of defence. That is a beauty. We'll put that down. It's a great outdoors mark of the day, Freaky. Certainly was. Goal saving mark, really. And the great outdoors sponsors of the mark of the day, and that was a beauty. It's McIntosh going to Williams. Whistle. Yeah, advantage paid to the Roos. Just a late hit there on McIntosh. To James O'Connell. The lead 46 to 27, the Roos, on the Inspirations Paint scoreboard. McMillan in that one-on-one -on -one contest. Fights away for it. Loss and a ground level there's Griner. Yeah, just McIntosh from that late, that late hit. He's just got up a bit proppy as well. Ooh, yeah. like a lot of bit of a cork when he tried to get up. He's just trying to run it out at the moment. Brooksy, a lot of numbers inside 50 of a Lockhart's Gap Road end here. Yeah, it is. Alley just going to try and get... Kines, oh. 
down, so here's their chance. Pritchard doesn't muck around, plays on, gets it on the boot. Minutes and one out with Lingham. Lingham again. Well done. Angus, he's having a great term, Freaky. Yeah, he certainly is. Just read the fly of the ball a little bit better there than Jai Middleton. Just was able to take a nice, really, un really uncontested mark there. Gallet to Belchie. Circles around. Left foot short one to Connor Stone. He goes to Stevens. She's getting his confidence up. Is Liam. And he goes in with another wobbly ball. Dangerous spot on Liam again. Freaky, I'm going to put that down as a... The great outdoors mark of the day as well. Yeah, he's just really working that pass line of defence really well, isn't he? He's been really strong for, for Yak and Dander in this game. He's been a thorn in the Beechworth side so far. Jeez, he's got sticky mitts, Brooksy. He's not all that big either, but he's fighting here at the moment. Leading the ball in fight very well. Isn't he what? And Garland wants to cut back towards the middle. Eaton got a fist to it. That's Marshall. This is Kane Scott. Good hand pass. Releases Connor Stone. Stone with a short one. Misses Middleton. Stone down now for the play there, Freaky. Yeah, just in the back. So downfield. I think Middleton will probably have the shot here. I reckon he'll probably be about 45, 47 metres out. He's got a 45 degree angle. Okay. So the ball coming back to Middleton. 46 playing 27. The inspiration's playing scoreboard. What's he do here, Brooksy? I think the young umpire has been tricked there. Lee Dale, very experienced, went and stood up on the 50 metre line. I reckon he's got about an extra 10 metres out of that. <laughs> he's been foxy. Yeah, there's a free kick given away. Might have been holding, was it, or over the shoulder free kick? I think it was actually in the, the back there, Lukey. I didn't see. There was a big contest of yeah. big, big, a lot of bodies that went up to it. It looks like Pritchard's the one that's going to get the free kick and have probably a little bit easier shot than what Middleton was just about to. Yeah, so Pritchard with it. They need this. This would be their fifth, Beachy. So 46 playing 27. They've certainly got all the momentum in this game now. They're up to the eight inside 50s in this second term to five, and they're getting a lot of repeat entries. So we've got 46 playing 27 on our scoreboard here. I understand the stream might have an extra point for the Bush Rangers, so that's interesting. I'll have to check that out. The old extra point in bush footy, eh, Brooksy? Yeah, it could be very crucial <laughs> later on because we're back in this, Bushies. Yeah, we see it so often. Here's McInnes, back pocket. Luke Brooks with us for Aubrey Wadog MG. Freaky on the Mac Jack stats. Hello to you, Phil Packer. A man of steel. Hope you're enjoying the coverage. And the ball is rolling towards the scoreboard here, far side. Comes out to McInnes. Gets one off to Lee Dale. Dale down the line. Now Leach is out. He's got a bit of room. Now he's... Uh, Jeffries was after him quickly. Bouncing ball. Yeah. And a holding free kick freaky. Yeah, against Huey Jarrett there. Just held on to his opponent. And just didn't let him have a run at the ball. And yeah, right free kick there from the umpire. Scott. He went to Jeffries. Then Jeffries looking for Cade Surrey. Marshall with him. And Surrey... <laughs> just let one of the roos know he was there. Ball's gone out of bounds here, just right of the scoreboard. Let's have a look at this one. Freaky, what are the inside 50s at the moment on the Mac Jack stats? Yeah, 8 to 5 in favour of Beechworth in this second quarter. Williams over the back, O'Connell. Belchie's got him. Surrey goes in. McInnes has got him wrapped up. And again, another stoppage. We'll go around the grounds again very shortly. Second turn brought to you by NZ Aubrey. It's a bit of a flat patch in the game here at the moment, it must be said. A hush over the crowd as the Roos lead, 46 to 28, and the Inspirations paint scoreboard. Now, here's Campbell Fendick. Right foot, wobbly kick. McInnes went by him, Marshall. Fisted it out, Molson. Now that's a silo kick, almost bring rain. Comes down now, Martin playing in front of Armstrong. And he's won again on that occasion, Brooksy. It is all right. Here we go. He's off in the game. He's been pretty quiet in his corner. He's been getting back into the midfield. And I need a bit of drive here at the moment. Yak, the ball, quite a bit stale. Yeah, just to back up Brooksy's point there on Mad Jack Shed. Mad Jack Shed stat sheet. Huey Jarrett hasn't had a touch in the second quarter yet. So just to validate your point there, Brooksy definitely needs to get back in the game for the Roos. Yeah, interesting. Here's Williams. Here's Mike McBurney. Got met by Cartledge. Stead. 
held in. So an important time in this game here as we work up towards the long break. How many have we gone on the Japo Donks time clock, Freaky? I'll let you check that. We'll keep my eye on the action. It was Kimmy Jarrett and brought down Stevens again. And the umpire's going to have it. So left to centre wing here on the broadcast side. Luke Brooks, Brad Freak and Luke Francis with you. Teddy Affair live stream 2023. First qualifying final between the Bushy and the Roos. Ellett, Connor Stone, Cartledge, and out of bounds, Ricky. Uh, how many have you gone, mate, on the uh, Japo Dogs time clock, do you reckon? Yeah, about 20 and a half minutes in this second quarter. Uh, and in this second quarter, Connor Stone on the Mad Jack Shed stat sheets up to seven disposals. has been really influential for, for the Bush Rangers. Yeah, beautiful. In it comes. Williams, Scott, Stone, right foot. Thornton, now off the ground by Houston, ends up with McIntosh, Welch has got him, Kane Scott has a chance here and some time to level up for the Bush Rangers, gets it out the back to Brent Ryan, has it now, and then goes with about a 25 metre kick, now Armstrong's a long way from home, Logan Martin mans the mark, Armstrong nice delivery to Middleton, good footy, now Jai, He's going to go long here. He winds up. Wobbly old kick. Ooh, not good. And it's gone out of bounds, Brooksy. It's like there's something wrong with his footy. I'm not seeing a heap of top punts out there at the moment. These are two very highly skilled sides, and they're butchering the footy both sides a lot today. Yeah, you're right. We've seen some floaters, like Brooksy said, Freaky. Yeah, especially in this second quarter. They might have changed the footy a quarter time, Brooksy. They're not sure, because it's a perfect day for football. Yeah. Second quarter. Action brought to you by NZ Aubrey. Here's Houston. Could, they could potentially be using a new footy uh, for, the, for the finals today. And obviously, they're not kicked in, Brooksy. They can tend to come off the foot a little bit different. Yeah, it could be. Oh, that's a good mark. Yeah, that's Marshall. With the Duns Twin City Cranes logo on the ball too. The Sharon. Looking schmick. Ellett. Now, Mazza left it for Lee Dale. Kane Scott's after him. How many has Lee Dale got now, Freaky, on the Mac Jack stats? Uh, 11 disposals this game for Lee. McBurney. Did he get it high? Yep. The umpire's caught it. So here goes Harry. Now yeah, what can they find inside 50 here? McBurney goes in. Drop part, McMillan. Carey, he's done well in his second turn to repel a couple of challenges. McInnes, right foot around the cracker, Freaky. Oh, it certainly was. Right foot snap running into the, the pocket away from goal. It's just a beautiful goal there. And it, it just kills all the momentum that Beach we've had in this quarter. They really have been on top of Yak, but just a beautiful goal there from McInnes to just get some momentum back for Yak. Yeah, it's not on Freaky. Beach have been all over him, but that was a great goal and he celebrated with the crowd over there. It was a fantastic finish. Yeah, that's it. A union goal of the day. Hello to Anthony. Back at the pub, tuning in. As the ball comes back to the centre of Sandy Creek Reserve. So 52 plays 28 on the Inspirations Paint scoreboard. Chapo Dong's time clock. What have we got now, Freaky? I'll get you to check that for me, mate. Uh, 23 and a half minutes, Luke. Well done, Middleton. McKinnis in the middle. Point to go on for with here, a little longer. That's OK. Nothing wrong with that. In fact, that was Mazlin on the ground with him. I'm probably just asking for nominations for the ruck. Middleton. Maslin. That one's just gone right up on the air. Comes down now. Dolney, he's after it. McIntosh just got rid of him. Cartledge joins the pack. Comes out the back. Maslin again. Scoops on it. Good work to McBurney. McBurney just thumbs it down the line to the half forward. there, Yakinen, it's just got some momentum back in this game. See Connor Stone just below us, taking a breather on the bench. Way away from our commentary position here at the moment, McBurney, Campbell Fendick and also Kane Scott. And the umpire again to take the pill, Brooksy. 
They rotated pretty heavily here, Beachworth, so that might help them in the second half. I see Fendick and Stone have all come off a couple of times this quarter, so they've obviously got a plan to run this one late. Brooksy for Aubrey Wodonga, MG. Ball again out of bounds, Freaky. And that's probably just a little bit of experience playing finals at this time of the year as well, isn't it, Brooksy? Just knowing the conditions and the ground coming into a game like that, when he's going to be a little bit warmer than what you're probably used to. Yeah, that's right. It's pretty warm, high intensity, and yeah, a few nerves, especially early, so yeah, rotate these blokes pretty heavily out of Sandy Creek. The coach of the Yak and Dandaroos is Darren Holmes. As we said, the Beechworth Bush Rangers co coaches are Tom Cartledge and also Braden Carey. TDFL live stream 2023. Hope you're enjoying the action on a super day. Wouldn't get a better one. What a time of the year it is, eh? Footy finals as we see McIntosh. You're a rich man, Brooksy. Yeah, Tiger man, mate. It was tough times there for a while, but yeah, pretty happy to tell everyone about for the Tigers after the last five or six years. <laughs> yeah, why not? Why not? And what kind of player? Dustin Martin, eh? Here's Lawson. Swings around. Ellett takes the mark, so it's turned over. Now the Bushies, a oh, good kick to Dolney. Now Stead, he's moving up the line. Here goes Dolney now to Middleton. He's playing well in this term. Getting his hands on the Sharon. Spits it back to Cartledge. Cartledge wants to come out broadcast side to the half forward flank. Thornton takes the mark. He's about 65 seconds. Tackle is a Brooksy. Yeah, so now over the shoulder. It was fortunate because Doldy needed to take that mark. He dropped it, but now he's won back the free kick. He's got very lucky. Freaky said pretty fortuitous there for the Bushies. Yeah, it certainly was, as you touched on there, Luke. You probably should have, you should have taken the uh, young Dolny, but obviously got a little bit lucky there. I did see the high first before the hold, so I think the right decision has been made in the end. Obviously, the uh, Beechworth supporters underneath this weren't going to be too happy if it was holding the ball. Uh, well done by the men in green. It's a tough job, and they've been great today. Is this one from Dolly? Oh, he's hit the upright. He's hit the post. At 52, plays 29 on the Inspirations Paint scoreboard. Japo Donks, time clock freaky, but probably gone about 26 and a half, I reckon. Yeah, it wouldn't be too much longer now, I wouldn't imagine, until we have the half-time break. But obviously, as many as many goals as the first quarter, so the quarter may not run as long. Dolny again. Huey Jarrett oh, takes on Ellett and then goes down the line. Look at that, over the top of Donaghy. Griner comes out. And Ryan just letting Donahue know he was there. Ball out of bounds here. Left of centre wing on the broadcast side. As things just heat up a little, it's gone up a notch, I reckon, Freaky. Yeah, I reckon it certainly has been. It's just those... To bring half-time at the Sandy Creek Reserve and at the long break... It is the Yakandandaroos leading in the first qualifying final, 8 4 52, to the Beechworth Bush Rangers, 4 5 29. Rightio, you're with Luke Brooks, Brad Freak, and Luke Francis. That second term was brought to you by NZ Albury. We'll get to a break and return shortly on the other side. It's happening. It's happening. We'll help you get the job done. We'll make your job a smooth one. Done, Twin City Cranes. For your semis, riggers, spotters, cranes Safety is our second name You're looking pretty with Dunst Twin City No job's out of reach Rig it, lift it, move it, shift it No fuss, talk to us We'll help you get the job done We'll make your job a smooth one Dunst Twin City Cranes CADMAC want your machinery to keep working as hard as you do So... As you're gearing up for the busy season, now is the time to stock up on your machinery oil and net wrap. For a limited time, get a free cap when you buy 20 litres of any New Holland oil. Or get a free jacket with every pallet of New Holland net wrap or bale twine. These offers are only available at CADMAC and while stocks last. CADMAC, helping you grow for life. T's and C's apply.
Finer embroidery is in the fabric of our community. Any logo on anything so your business can proudly present themselves well. Embroidery that adds that personal touch that doesn't break the bank. Join the Finer Embroidery community today. Proudly supporting the TDFL. Drag it, drop it, crop it, play it, write it, paste it, and erase it. Drag Need a computer that won't crash? Need your Wi-Fi turbocharged? Need better data backup? Whatever you need your computer to do, Wangaratta Computers will help you do it better. Because that's what we do best. And we can do it in store or at your home. So get your tech working better at wangaratacomputers.com.au. Play it, write it, space it, and erase it. CADMAC want your machinery to keep working as hard as you do. So, as you're gearing up for the busy season, now is the time to stock up on your machinery oil and net wrap. For a limited time, get a free cap when you buy 20 litres of any New Holland oil. Or get a free jacket with every pallet of New Holland net wrap or bale twine. These offers are only available at CADMAC and while stocks last. CADMAC, helping you grow for life. T's and C's apply. Finer embroidery is in the fabric of our community. Any logo on anything so your business can proudly present themselves well. Embroidery that adds that personal touch that doesn't break the bank. Join the Finer Embroidery community today. Proudly supporting the TDFL. We'll help you get the job done, we'll make your job a smooth one. Dance Twin City Cranes, for your semis, riggers, spotters, cranes. Safety is our second name. You're looking pretty with Dance Twin City, no job's out of reach. Rig it, lift it, move it, shift it, no fuss, talk to us. We'll help you get the job done, we'll make your job a smooth one. Guns Twin City Craze. 29 at the long break. Uh, well, Brooksy, Luke Brooks. Uh the Ruse just got off to a blinding start. They played some good footy early. They got the hop, if you don't mind, on the Bush Rangers. The Bush Rangers have worked. Griska from Yak, who started probably the first 10 minutes, was probably your best player. I think he might be gone for the day. I haven't seen him back out there. So that mm. could be a big blow for Yak and Dander. And obviously, they've got McMillan limping down forward. So that could play a part later in the game with Beechworth rotating pretty heavily, obviously, with a with an eye to Yak and Dander having a couple down. And they'll back themselves to try and run over the top of him. Yeah, Brooksy brought you by Aubrey Wodonga, MG. As Lucas just said, Freaky, uh, McMillan, so good. Up forward, dangerous, and Griska sensational coming off half back. Yeah, well, Griska's probably one that surprised all three of us to start the game. He's, obviously, you, you look at more of the, the, the star players in the side, and he, he's run and carry off that, that, their mm. half back line to start the game was outstanding. And to lose a player uh, like that in this game is going to be uh, um, hurt them a lot, as Brooks he says, with those rotations as well. And Loggie McMillan had the six disposals and kicked a couple of goals in that first quarter, and then, yeah, looks uh, probably a really heavily rolled ankle, so they're going to really, really going to hurt not having his just their leg speed as well mm. to be able to break the lines as the game wears on. Gee, Lee Dale can play the game, Freaky. Yeah, he certainly can. He's up to the 12 disposals on our Mac Jack shed stat sheet. 11 disposals as well for Ben McIntosh if we have a look at the, uh, the sheet as a whole. And for the for the Beechworth side of things, Connor Stone's up to 11. I thought his second quarter was really strong. Him and him and Campbell Fendick both got the game bo back on Beechworth's terms in that in that second term. Fendick's up to the 9 disposals. If we have a look at the team stats, they did get a little bit more ball going in their forward half, Beechworth, in that second 
second term. They had the 11 inside 50s to 8, which favoured them, but just probably didn't capitalise as much on the scoreboard as they really, really would have liked to in that second term. So there's a, I think Beechworth, Brooksy, I think they're in the game. They've still got a lot to improve within the game as well, which they're probably hopeful to go, carry on to in the second half. Yeah, they haven't been anywhere near their best. Yakadanda seem to somehow get someone behind the ball all the time, so they probably need to pull one out of the stoppage because they've been pretty good around the stoppages. Get one out, make it an even number, and just make it a real fight inside. Jai Middleton, as you touch on there, look, he's, ha he's having a, a, he's definitely have a presence in that forward half. I think what Beechworth need to do, might need to replicate Brooksy, I don't know, you think, we saw that first quarter when Yak were able to bring the ball to ground before he rolled his ankle, McMillan and these other little fellas in the forward half for, for Yak and Dan at the feet, were able to keep the pressure in and keep the goals. Beechworth don't seem to have that the, as at the moment with their smaller forwards, so I think that's one area that they could look to improve in the second half. Yeah, you're spot on, Freaky, they probably need to find a small small with a bit of leg speed and get him down there, And because as you said, McMillan, he really set this game up in the first probably five, ten minutes with his leg speed, getting good looks on goal with his pressure so yeah Beach we probably need to have a look what's happening in the room next door and try and match that yeah half time again it's brought to you by the Shed Company now Zach Leach Brooksy he, he just reminds me of your big man Scott Myers they've got that physical presence and they seem to carry the, uh, their team on their back at stages they, they, everyone gets behind them they've got a big hulking man there just doing a lot of donkey work and every bush footy club You know he's out there. Whenever there's a bit of push and shove, he's the one who's involved. And yeah, everyone on the ground knows where Leach is at all times, which is very good for Yakadena to have. Yeah, for sure. Luke Brooks again for Aubrey Wodonga MG. Rightio, Freaky. We might go around, uh, well, the netball courts, actually, for Atura Aubrey and just check the scores. Yeah, in the games that have been played in the, the netball today, in the under-13s, Yakandanda 32, Faguna 28. In the under-15s, Chilton 39, Wodonga Saints 36. In the under-17s, Talangara 37, to Barney 40. In the C grade, Barney uh, lost to Chilton in that game. Chilton 39, Barney 36 and in the B grade mid are too strong for Tulane at 39 goals to 34 in the A grade games on at the moment. Beautiful freaking we might just have uh, one more look at the Mac Jack stats sheet before we uh, we get to a break again. Yeah, as we touched on, inside 50 is very even for this. It's a contest as a whole. 22 for Beechworth, 21 for Yakanena. So it just shows Beechworth are getting enough ball going forward. They just need to, to shore up their uh, offensive end of the ground. They'll be able to get a few more scores on the on the game. If we have a look at the possession stats, Lee Dale leading our stat sheet. He's up to 11 disposals. Ben McIntosh up to the 11. Connor Stone for Beechworth. He's up to the 11 disposals. And Campbell Fendick, he's up to 9 for Beechworth as well. Yeah, beautiful freaky again. Half time brought you by the Shed Company and have a long break. It is the Yak and Dandaroos in the first qualifying final. They lead 8 4 52 to the Beechworth Bush Rangers 4 5 29. Luke Brooks, Brad Freak, and Luke Francis with you at the Sandy Creek Reserve. We'll get to a break and return with a big second half after this. CADMAC want your machinery to keep working as hard as you do. So, as you're gearing up for the busy season, now is the time to stock up on your machinery oil and net wrap. 
For a limited time, get a free cap when you buy 20 litres of any New Holland oil. Or get a free jacket with every pallet of New Holland net wrap or bale twine. These offers are only available at CADMAC and while stocks last. CADMAC, helping you grow for life. T's and C's apply. Finer Embroidery is in the fabric of our community. Any logo on anything so your business can proudly present themselves well. Embroidery that adds that personal touch that doesn't break the bank. Join the Finer Embroidery community today. Proudly supporting the TDFL. Drag it, drop it, crop it, play it, write it, paste it, and erase it. Drag Need a computer it, that won't crash? Need your Wi-Fi turbocharged? Need better data backup? Whatever you need your computer to do, Wangaratta Computers will help you do it better. Because that's what we do best. And we can do it in store or at your home. So get your tech working better at wangaratacomputers.com.au. Play it, write it, paste it, and erase it. CADMAC want your machinery to keep working as hard as you do. So, as you're gearing up for the busy season, now is the time to stock up on your machinery oil and net wrap. For a limited time, get a free cap when you buy 20 litres of any New Holland oil. Or get a free jacket with every pallet of New Holland net wrap or bale twine. These offers are only available at CADMAC and while stocks last. CADMAC, helping you grow for life. T's and C's apply. Finer Embroidery is in the fabric of our community. Any logo on anything so your business can proudly present themselves well. Embroidery that adds that personal touch that doesn't break the bank. Join the Finer Embroidery community today. Proudly supporting the TDFL. We'll help you get the job done, we'll make your job a smooth one. Dunn's Twin City Cranes. For your semis, riggers, spotters, cranes. Safety is our second name. You're looking pretty with Dunn's Twin City. No job's out of reach. Rig it, lift it, move it, shift it. No fuss, talk to us. We'll help you get the job done, we'll make your job a smooth one. Dunn's Twin City Cranes.
Francis on the TDFL live stream. First qualifying final day. And at the long break, it is the Ruse leading 52 to 29. So a big second half coming up here, Freaky. Freaky. Our third term sponsor is Reason. Is this one's going to be a beauty? Yeah, it's going to be a massive quarter for this one as well. Obviously, Beachworth we've got a bit of momentum in that second quarter. Just they weren't probably able to capitalise as much as they would like on the scoreboard. And they'd really like to get that, that rectified in this third quarter now, obviously. Probably don't have to cut the lead back to zero in one quarter, yeah. but just keep chipping away at it. Brooksy, your thoughts for Aubrey Wodonga, MG? Yeah, Beachworth definitely had the better of the second quarter, so I can see this thing going down to the wire. Yeah. If Millen's limping, he's staying out on the ground, which is a big effort from him, and mm. McIntosh seems to be limping too from that cork he got early in the second quarter, so big half for him, obviously limping around and having the Beachworth co-coach tag him as well, so big lift from Jarrett for Yak and Dandre, I think. Absolutely. Now, we should be just picking up on the live stream. Quick warm up, had a stretch, got in positions, and Beechworth have just had to go straight to their spots like the old Oskick days. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, Freaky on the Mac Jack stats. Let's get our leading possession getter for each team. Yeah, we've got Lee Dale from Yak and Dando. He's up to the 12 disposals, and for the Beechworth side, it's Connor Stone. He's had the 11 disposals in that first half. Connor Stone, especially, was really strong in that second quarter, had eight of those 11 in the second term. Yeah, let's. He's a little proper, isn't he? He's definitely proper. I see Fendix going forward too, so obviously Stone had a big second quarter, so they've gone with him to start the third quarter in the middle. James O'Connell also on the ball for the Ruse. Huey Jarrett is there, Zach Leach in the ruck. About to go here, third term. It's brought to you by Wiesners. Commercial club scoreboard. Sees the Ruse up, 52 to 29. The winner, of course, will advance and play the Kiwa Sandy Creek Hawks next Saturday right here. And they'll play off for a spot in the big one. So underway, here's Leach. Straight away, another stoppage. That's Middleton behind him. That's all Ruckman. Reese hit again. Middleton and Leach virtually broke even. Here's Dolney. Hurry 140 inside 50 to the Lockhart's Gap Road in Armstrong. Fendick. Didn't see Petrala coming, he was blindsided. I reckon the uh, crowd tells the story. <laughs> Can't you what? Here's Lee Dale. Oh, that's, you've got to love it, don't you, country footy. Donaghy, half forward flank. And a little start with the ball. Last turn. Now Nick, he's about 70 out from home. He plays on now. Goes to the hot spot. Let's have a look who's down there. Middleton come over the top of the fist. Braden Kerry working hard. Kane Scott out to McBurney. Harry. Harry's kicked it. They kicked the all-important first goal of the third term, the Ruse. That's a Union Hotel goal of a day of beauty, Freaky. Yeah, as we touched on there at halftime, just one of those small players for the Yak and Nanda boys in the right place at the right time. Just a nice tackle and hey with Bernie, as we said. A nice snap there. Bit of a flow there again. Bit of a theme with the ball today. Yeah. A bit of floating in the end. And the skills of the, the boys have been fine. It's just it's like the boys, the ball's been floating a bit, but small in the right place at the right time there for the Yak. It was good from Williams. He just came off the bench and just ran forward and got that made a contest, got it to the ground, and then Harry McBurney done the rest. Yeah, Brooks, he caught it earlier. We've seen a few floaters with the Sherrod. That one heading through for the Roos. Sailing through the big sticks to the Kurganya Pony Club in back in the centre. Umpiring's been very good. Middleton and Williams. Ball spat out of the pack. Lee Dale, brought down by Dolnick, cartilage there. And in comes James O'Connell, the umpire. We'll have it again. So just left of the centre here on a cracking day. Middleton, Stone, tried to rush through. O'Connell to Williams, working in close. Huey Jarrett at ground level. Stone again, brought down by McBurney. 
Didn't think he had much time there, Brooksy. <laughs> no. As I said, a really good spot here, right above the beach for supporters. Yeah, that's right. James O'Connell tried to get it to Griner. Stead. Bouncing ball. For the Bushies. Now, the Roos have manned up well here. Zoned off. Dale. Yeah, great football, this guy. Then goes forward again. Oh. Through the hands of Jeffries. Ends up with Leach. Leach. Oh, well done, Carey. Donaghy. Nick. Carey after him. Donaghy took a couple on. And you heard the crowd below us. Harry again, McBurney. No. Misses to the right-hand side and one behind. What have we got early in the third term, Freaky, on the Mac Jack Shed stat sheet? Yeah, well, your man Lee Dale already up to the three disposals in this third quarter inside the first three and a half minutes as well. He's been outstanding on that wing for, for the Roos today. Brooksy, what are you seeing at the start of the third term here for Aubrey Wodonga, MG? Just the way he acts it up behind the ball. They're finding hard to get through at the moment, Beechworth. They're very good with that ball in hand, which is pretty important. Third quarter brought to you by Wiesners. He's Malsum. That's a long kick to Dolney. Dropped it. Williams off the ground. Huey Jarrett picks it up now. And that ball's gone out of bounds. The boundary umpire said. And again, we'll have another boundary strain. We'll go around the grounds again very shortly. Now, what are we gone freaky on the Japo Donks time clock? We've gone just over four minutes. So we did have our... It still hasn't worked all day, our clock on the scoreboard, so we apologise for that. We've had to flick back to our, our freaky's phone, actually. And here's the boundary umpire again. Hurls it back into play. Williams. Here we Jared overran it. Stead. Trying to bust through. O'Connell has him wrapped up. Good umpiring. And it'll be a ball up, Freaky. Go around the grounds in the ovens in Murray. Wayne Grader Rovers 65, North Albury 22. Uh, one point lead to Myrtle for 39, 38. And Albury up by 20 points against Lavington. Yeah, beautiful. Got the San Domenico Stakes and also the up and coming on in Sydney today. Oh, good mark from Brent Ryan for the Bushies. Wants to come out towards Cartledge. The trailer came out. Bushies crowd fuming here, Brooksy. Yeah, he probably did look high for Petrarca, Petrarca coming back. Yeah, just probably got Tom Cartledge a little... Stead, just couldn't keep his footing. Ellett, didn't have it in the end. And it's been called a sling or dump tackle. Ellett wins a free kick. And he goes with about a 25 metre one. Surrey got hands to it. Well done by Marshall. McBurney. It's been good in the third turn. Brought to ground by Campbell Fendick. What are you seeing, Freaky? Ethan Petrala just got the big knock in that last contest he had there. He's just come off the ground. I think I saw one of the trainers even asking me, all right, and he shook his head. So just have to be a bit of a watch there. Could be down two on the bench already early in this third quarter. Yeah, and a ball up. You heard it. Luke Brooks is with us, the Chilton legend and the reigning premiership coach from the Swannies. They play tomorrow against Barna Wather. Can't wait for that one, the elimination final. That'll be an absolute beauty. Gus McLeod, Robbie McKinlay, Blake Escott, and Freaky, you're back here as well. Yeah, back out here tomorrow, and obviously that, that game, as we touched on, will be broadcast on 2AY 1494, so either watch it on the live stream or on your wireless. That's it. Middleton, Stead. Ruse pounce on him, brought to ground. 59 plays, 29, 30 point lead at the moment on the Commercial Club scoreboard. The Ruse up, third turn brought to you by Wiesners, Chapo Donks time clock. What do you got on that? Phone of yours, Freaky. Seven minutes gone this third quarter. Good man, Leach. Should have caught one high there, I think it was accidental in the end. Go, Brooksy. That's what the bench can do for you. Yeah, no, you've got, you've got to make sure you're disciplined, but you can't That's right. give it away. No, absolutely right. There goes Brent Ryan. The arc of the 50 was on the best of kicks. Dolney. 
And then bursting away was McIntosh. Okay, now they're out now. Let's have a look. McMillan. We know he rolled his ankle. Early on in the first half, left foot delivery going in forward. Trying to find Donaghy. It's Kimmy Jarrett. Donaghy goes again. Trying to get it to Griner. She's working in tight over there. Ball's wrapped up, Freaky. Yeah, five inside fifties on the back track sheds that sheet for Yakandanda in this third quarter. One to Beechworth have had more from forward momentum and obviously only kicking the one goal in this quarter. Yeah, 30 points in it. Those pies last night, Freaky, the poor old Bomber supporters, it's seems like it's getting harder and harder. I don't care about Bomber supporters, mate. Yeah, I understand. Brooks here. Uh, they might try you, those poor old Bomber supporters. <laughs> <laughs> supporters. Not getting much from me. Either. <laughs> no, fair enough. Well, I'm a Cats man, but, gee, it's been a long road for them, hasn't it? And just when you think they're getting it back on track, it all seems to fall apart again. But having said that, it hurts me to say this, Freaky, they're up against a quality team, your, your team, the Pies, and they've got a few out too, don't worry. Yeah, well, it's real stuff starts in a couple of weeks, so hopefully they get those bodies back and we'll go from there. You're right about that. Here's Dolny, true centre wing. And he goes down the line. Armstrong. Belchi. Been quiet today. Alexandro is Kate Surrey. Marshall. McInnes goes in. Marshall again hurriedly. Oh, well done, McBurn. He must have just gone the required distance. Hooks it around his body. Now McIntosh is out. Let's have a look. He has a bounce. Just got rid of it in time to the half forward flank. Donna here, three on one. Maslin versus Campbell Fendick. Well done, Fendick. Up to Brent Surrey. On to Molson. Molson. Bouncing ball. Williams got a shocker. It's knocked ahead. Middleton and Williams, they meet. Dolney in the back, was it? Umpire happy to let it go. Yes, and there will be a stoppage here, Freaky. Yeah, it looks like big Lee in Lee Williams as well. It just it looks like he might have hurt an ankle or something there. It wasn't any contact from any player. It just, he just went to tackle Jai Middleton in the middle there, and he's really slow to get up off the ground there. Yeah, interesting. He's in trouble, Williams here, Brooksy. Yeah, they're going to run out of troops either way they go. McBurn, he's just come off for a well-earned rest. It looks like he's going to have to go straight back out again. Yeah, that's it. Gee, they'll like the week off if they can get it. Here's O'Connell. Bouncing ball to right of centre wing. Bendick. Good pressure from Yui Jarrett. And wins the footy for his club. To McIntosh. Into Jimmy Lawson over the top. To Maslin. Maslin forward entry here. For Jack Shed stat sheet to two in this quarter. They just had some repeat entries and they just need to capitalise on this momentum that they have got. Zach, he wants to get around Stevens and does so. And he goes with a top spinner. There's another wild one. Brooksy, bouncing ball, Carey. And then umpire um, could play on there. There was a free kick given. Happy to let it go forward. Stevens, he's on the move. So Beach, you really need one out of this. Armstrong, played front on by Logan Martin. So Lockie with it. That's 75-80 out. Goes to Tristan Stead. What can they build for from here? Great delivery to Pritchard. But he is wide. Interesting. So... They are losing a few troops, as Brooksy said, Freaky. Yeah, they certainly are in this game. There's another one. Jimmy, even Jimmy Lawson was a bit slow to get up there as well, but he looks like he's all right. He is coming off the ground now, but, yeah, just losing troops as you touched on there. Big kick for Dylan. It's not going to be a goal to behind. So 59 plays 30, a 29-point lead on the commercial club scoreboard to the Ruse. Third turn brought to you by Wiesners. Japo Dong's time clock has gone 11 and a half. Third turn. Brent Surrey, got Yui Jarrett high. Two number threes. Goes hard at it, doesn't he? Yeah. He only lives one way, doesn't he? Brooks? He's a bull, he's very hard at it. That left foot, he swings onto it. The two Surrey's both got him high. There was a joint high tackle. Brooksy for Aubrey Wadog MG. Cross half back the ruse. This is Logan Martin. He wants to chip it wide to Houston. Be happy with this, the ruse. 29-point lead, five goals. 
Third turn. Stone, McIntosh, Stead, try to get it up to Armstrong. McIntosh again. Wild one, Fendick came in. Now Connor Stone has a chance here to run onto it. Oh, well done, Martin, coming from the opposite direction. Now Connor Stone is down. Just good hard footy, I thought. They brought it back to that big hit. I th oh, I'm not exactly sure what they've done here. Sorry, Lukey. I thought it was that big hit on Connor Stone, but now it's a Yakim Nanda free kick. Yeah, that's so interesting. I, I agree, Freaky. I thought that was what was going to happen as well. So, Brooksy, I'm not sure whether you caught it. No, I think the hit was pretty fair, to be honest. He's just yeah. nice and hard at it, and he's actually won the free kick forward. I think someone must have got hold of him after it. Yeah, I agree. Just a good contest between on, you and a bush ranger. Logan Martin and Connor Stone. Great footy from both. This is James O'Connell. Halfback flag. They're up by 29 points to Ruse. So, Bucci need to get a rig along. The game is slipping away. Eaton wants to angle back towards the middle to Stevens. Need to string something together. Liam. Now, Cartledge is out. He's got a bit of time, so the delivery should be good. Now, Pritchard's on. Oh, the kick wasn't good. Armstrong. Back to Cartledge. High ball inside 50. Lockhart's gap road in. Pack goes up. Garland weaving through traffic. Hurley on the boot. To McIntosh. McIntosh plays on to Maslin. Maslin. mcburney has got to go now. Oh, well done. Meant Ryan. Kane Scott picks it up. To Cartledge. To Sari Griner. He's gone. Freaky. Yeah, Harry Burney just came straight off the ground then too, off that, that, that little collision in the middle of the ground there. I think it might be just a wind. He's straight away just signaled to the bench. He's just on his hands and knees basically, just off of the ground. Brooks, he's some great fo footy being played here in the last few moments. Yeah, it's pretty hard footy. I see Armstrong's limping off too now. He's limping and Stone come off of the shoulder from that right shoulder from that hit before. So Key will be licking their lips and so will Chilton and Barney at the moment. Special comments today by Luke Brooks. Aubrey Wodong MG. Now Zach Leach quickly on the boot. High ball. Donna, he comes out. Oh, well done, Tristan Stead. I'm going to put that down as one of the great outdoors marks of the day. McIntosh to Lee Dahl. A little quiet this quarter. Helicopter kick over the top of the pack. Williams and also Molson. Williams knocked it out. Good play to Griner. This is out to Donaghy. Out in the full. It's hit the behind post, Riggy. Yeah, it certainly has. Ben McIntosh up to six, uh, six disposals in this third quarter for the Yak and Nanda. Ruse on the Matt Jack Shed stat sheet. Third quarter again. Brought to you by Weasness. Hope you're enjoying the action on the TDFL live stream. Luke Brooks, Brad Freak and Luke Francis with you this afternoon. As we said, back here tomorrow with the live stream and also the broadcast on 4094 2AY. Gus McLeod, Sir Robert McKinlay, Blake Escott, and you're here also, Frisky. So here's Belchi off to Molson. And they head down towards the half forward flank. Here's Cartledge. It's been good in this quarter. They need a goal, though, the Bush Rangers. It goes without saying. Surrey came through. Campbell Fendick. Just head over the footy. Petrala dishes out the back. Kane Scott. Hands on the Sharon. Out to Molson. Molson. Retreats to Stead. Heads back into the middle. To Ryan. Huey Jarrett on the mark. Now Dolan is out here. Gets him. Now Deegan is about 70 from home. So is there some space down there? He wants a lead. He's going to go... Oh, there's another wild entry, Brooksy. Dear, oh dear. And Lee Dale has taken the mark in defence. Someone check that footy. Yeah. <laughs> and you've, been, you've been right. You've been right on the mark. It's floated around like a balloon on occasions. Back to him, Deeds! Back to him, Deeds! Yeah, perhaps finals and nerves. Who knows? McIntosh, she missed Donaghy on the lead. Molson handles to Campbell Fendick. And burns Molson on the give and go. Then wants to go down the line. Thornton dropped it on the first attempt, regained it. Well done, Williams. High pressure. Then gets it across the line. Right as centre wing. 
Duns, Twin City Cranes, TDFL Premiership for 2023. Look at the Cranes over there, Freaky, looking good. Yeah, they're not too bad. Be good to see when there's a bit. down that Yakinanda do have. Yeah, for sure. What have you seen, Brooksy? Fendix limping as well. Second or third time he's come off. So they've got three off at the moment that have all got a bit of an injury too, Beechworth. Yeah, he's in trouble. Here goes Lawson inside 50. Good entry. Well done, Carey. Playing in front. And got it off to Belchi. He's hit the umpire there. Brent Ryan. Left foot. Patrol, though, picks it up for the ruse. Oh, look at that for delivery. Well, the mate Leach, not quite. Knocked away by Jeffries. Molson, she's worked his heart out this quarter. And then a long ball up towards Cade Surrey, burning out, just bounces before him. Cade goes again, and then wants to swing around a five-time BNF winner, this man, with his Bush Rangers, heads inside 50. Good mark, Logan Martin. Just holding up the Ruse defence, Brooksy, and they want to come broadcast side. Yeah, he's been huge, Martin back there. Him and Marshall, the two key backs have been super. Special comments, thanks to Audrey the Donga, MG. Luke Brooks. McBurney receives it back for Lawson. Harry goes long for home to the goal square. Well done, Jeffries has knocked it across the line for one behind. So 60 plays, 30, a five-goal lead here on the commercial club scoreboard. This quarter is brought to you by Wiesners. Chapo Donk's time clock. We'll have a look at that, Freaky. As Carey comes back from the fullback position. 19 minutes, Lukey. For Japo Donks. Belchi. Thornton. Petrala. McBurney. Oh, beautiful delivery. Hitting Donahue. That's some of the best footy we've seen all day, Brooksy. Yeah, McBurney's quarter. We haven't been taking his stats, but he's been huge. He's probably been the pick of the players this quarter, to be honest. His entries have been good and his pressure's been fantastic. He's had a huge quarter. Yeah, couldn't agree more there with Brooksy. I was just about to touch on it myself. I think his influence has been outstanding in this third quarter. Obviously had that little bit of a knock. He's come back out. And other good news there as well for Yakandana as well. Ethan Petrara was involved in that play as well, so he's back on the ground as well. Yeah, so almost gone 20 on the Japo Donks time clock. Third term, 29-point lead. This is get it out to 35. Nick Donaghy, and he likes it. He loves it. That is an absolute cracker. That's a double for Nick. And that is a Union Hotel goal of the day. And they're going to be hard to run down from here, Brooksy. Yeah, they look very good, Yakin And Beechworth just find it hard to score. Marshall and Martin have been huge down back, the key backs. And, yeah, I just think they need to find, we we'll touch on it earlier, they need to find a small forward. Yeah. The, the, everyone over there, down there is over six foot and hits the ground and it comes out that easily. One that I think they probably need a little bit more influence in this rest of this game, Brooksy, is probably Belchi in the middle of the ground. He's one that can be that little bit of a small forward. He is quite dynamic with him with that left foot as well. So he's probably somebody that they'd like to get into this game. He's in the middle of the ground at the moment. Yeah, definitely needs to lift. Got the San Domenico coming up also in Sydney. And the Carline Stakes in Melbourne. Here's Kane Scott. McBurney. She's playing a good game now, Harry. He's just gone across the chalk here. We'll have a boundary throw. He's getting his hands on the footy, Harry. Yeah, he certainly is. You can see he's, he's, he's catching, cashing in his petrol tickets. He's definitely <laughs> sucking in the big ones now. Yeah, his work rate's been huge, but he works his bum off, then he comes off, has a quick spell, and he goes back out. He's been huge. First final day, Brooks, so you can feel your lungs. <laughs> Most definitely. Yeah. You think, what am I doing here? Middleton, flat throw in. That's OK. Lawson. Brought to ground by Kane Scott. And again, the umpire will call for it. So 66 plays, 30 here. On the Have a look, Jeffries, big fist to it. Donaghy took on Molson, got his kick away, centering. McIntosh at the back, Cartledge at the front. And then McMillan, this is Carey again. Would he cut one high? Griner plays on. <laughs> Need to kick it in the air in the end. Here's Ryan. The grubber wasn't good enough for Brooks. He thought Ryan was just going to disappear, I think. <laughs> I don't know what he was <laughs> That's right. And then Ellett. And that was Houston. 
Williams. McIntosh. How many's he got now? Fricky off to Lawson. Now to Yui Jarrett. Yui sends it in. Donahue. Well done at the back. Malsum again. Good clash from players. Jeffries. He puts Surrey under pressure. Oh, well done, Brent Surrey. And then got it to eat. Now, how many's McIntosh got, Freaky? He's had eight in this quarter, which takes him up to 19 for the game. On the Mac Jack stats. Oh, just inside the field of play. Thornton dances around. Ooh. Yeah, thought that one was in, but look, it, it, look, I enjoy that from the young umpire. He's, he's got a smile on his face. That's all right, Brooksy. Yeah, that's right. He's having yeah. a go. Good on the young fella. That's it. That's it. I tell you now, you wouldn't see me doing it. Here's Middleton. Kane Scott. Lee Dale. Maslin sitting out the back. Took the mark. Really had to man him up on that occasion. Low driving ball. Donahue. Kate Surrey. And Lawson went in. Here's Donahue again. Trying to weave through. Gets it on the boot. Not on the run. Yeah. Ethan, he's a strong footballer. Strapping lad. So what can he do? It's not often you see blokes first grade playing in a 99, Guernsey. He is. And he's just missed that one. That is one behind. So 67 plays 30 at three-quarter time at the Sandy Creek Reserve in the first qualifying final. The ruse going well. That turn was brought to you by Wiesners. And we'll get to a break here. You're with Luke Brooks, Brad Freak, and Luke Francis on the TDFL live stream. We'll help you get the job done. We'll make your job a smooth one. Dunn's Twin City Cranes. For your semis, riggers, spotters, cranes. Safety is our second name. You're looking pretty with Dunn's Twin City. No job's out of reach. Rig it, lift it, move it, shift it. No fuss, talk to us. We'll help you get the job done. We'll make your job a smooth one. Dunn's Twin City Cranes. CADMAC want your machinery to keep working as hard as you do. So, as you're gearing up for the busy season, now is the time to stock up on your machinery oil and net wrap. For a limited time, get a free cap when you buy 20 litres of any New Holland oil. Or get a free jacket with every pallet of New Holland net wrap or bale twine. These offers are only available at CADMAC and while stocks last. CADMAC, helping you grow for life. T's and C's apply. Finer Embroidery is in the fabric of our community. Any logo on anything so your business can proudly present themselves well. Embroidery that adds that personal touch that doesn't break the bank. Join the Finer Embroidery community today. Proudly supporting the TDFL. Drag it, drop it, crop it, play it, write it, space it, and erase it. Drag Need a computer that won't crash? Need your Wi-Fi turbocharged? Need better data backup? Whatever you need your computer to do, Wangaratta Computers will help you do it better. Because that's what we do best. And we can do it in store or at your home. So get your tech working better at wangaratacomputers.com.au. Play it, write it, space it, and erase it. CADMAC want your machinery to keep working as hard as you do. So, as you're gearing up for the busy season, now is the time to stock up on your machinery oil and net wrap. For a limited time, get a free cap when you buy 20 litres of any New Holland oil. Or get a free jacket with every pallet of New Holland net wrap or bale twine. 
These offers are only available at CADMAC and while stocks last. CADMAC, helping you grow for life. T's and C's apply. Finer Embroidery is in the fabric of our community. Any logo on anything so your business can proudly present themselves well. Embroidery that adds that personal touch that doesn't break the bank. Join the Finer Embroidery community today. Proudly supporting the TDFL. We'll help you get the job done, we'll make your job a smooth one. Dunn's Twin City Cranes. For your semis, riggers, spotters, cranes. Safety is our second name. You're looking pretty with Dunn's Twin City. No job's out of reach. Rig it, lift it, move it, shift it. No fuss, talk to us. We'll help you get the job done, we'll make your job a smooth one. Dunn's Twin City Cranes. Final term, so can the Bush Rangers work their way back into it? Or will the Roos advance to play the Hawks next Saturday for a spot in the Duns Twin City Cranes GF for this year? Tomorrow, it'll be the Chilton Swans up against the Marnawatha Tigers. We'll be back here. So Gus McLeod, Roy McKinley, also Blake Escott, and Freaky's back here also. Today with us in special comments has been Luke Brooks from the Chilton Footy Club. It's been wonderful to us for Aubrey Wodonga MG, some great intel. What do you reckon, Brooksy? It's, well, it's obviously come down to this for the Bushies. Yeah, they're just going to roll the dice. I see they put Stevens out onto a wing, so whether they're going to try and go through that side of the ground, I hope that his marking power over there might be able to help him get up the other end, but you look at his matchups, Lee's, Lee Dale, who's been one of the best on ground, so I'm not sure how that's going to go. Yeah, that's it. So, so the Bushies might have to take the long hard road. We'll see though, it's not over yet. Got it down to Molson. Kevin plays 30. I reckon big Liam Williams in that first rock contest cop one where you probably don't want to cop one, Lukey. I think I know what you're talking about, Freaky. There's McIntosh. Inside 50 to the Lockhart's Gap Road end. Carey. She's done so well. A few occasions coming out of defence is Braden to Stevens. So this is good to Belchie. 
This is what they need, the Bush Rangers. Now, what have they got forward here? Beyond halfway to Ellett. Good mark. Next delivery is so important. Clancy, well done. Into Pritchard. That's great footy, Brooksy. And plays on to Alessandro Belchi. Some of the best bushes footy we've seen all day, Brooksy. Yeah, it was good from Pritchard too. A lot of forwards want to go back and be the man that kicks the goal, but you just got to do the team thing. He's in a way better position and to say they need this is an understatement. Huge okay. kick. That's it. So, at the moment, the Roo's up by 37 and he's missed it, Alessandro, on the X-ray group scoreboard. So, it's a bad miss. He really needed that one, Freaky. Yeah, they certainly did, just to give himself a little bit of hope and a little bit more momentum. But as you say, as Brooksy said, good start, use the ball well, get themselves an early inside 50 as well and an early shot at goal. Just keep building a bit of momentum from there. And San Domenico and Sydney taken out by Libertad from Moravia and Butch Cassidy. Great racing returning to both Sydney and Melbourne. All the good horses coming back, of course. His Garland. Deep in defence. Well done by Maslin. Now he wants to angle back towards McIntosh. One of the favourites, as we said, for the Barton medal on Monday night. That'll be at the Commercial Club. Brooksy, who's your tip for the Barton medal? I reckon it'll be a midfielder. See, it'll be McIntosh, Cooper from Chilton, Fendick and Hagen from Kaywell. It'll be one of them four midfielders, I'd reckon. Tell us about your man, Cooper. Uh, he's a superstar. He's probably only about 75 kilos. He's gone back-to-back. -back. In his three years at Chilton, he's gone back-to-back. BNFs last two years and yeah, That's he right. hit the scoreboard this year. I think he kicked 47 goals this year to go. With that. Yeah, and fought tooth and nail last year. Here goes Petrala. And then a long one, Jeffries. Is this one going to be knocked across the line of his? So it's one behind at the gap road end. Yeah, a Barton medal, eh? He's a very good player, is McIntosh. I think he was an Albury Tigers junior. I think he played a handful of games for the Bushies too, Freaky. Yeah, he, he certainly has that class that he would have come through the, the Bushy ranks. You can see when he runs out there, he's super, super fit. He took that knock early in the game, but still seems to be covering the, the ground really, really well. Yeah, he's Dolney. Turned over to Houston. Houston wasn't the best of kicks to McBurney. Jeffries came at him. Harry just had to hold it in. Oh, OK, yep. So the umpire has paid that one to Ryan. Here goes Brent. He sends it up towards the half-forward flank. Pritchard a long way from home. McInnes there. Here's McIntosh. Look at the ball handling skills. Would you off to O'Connell? James, scrubby kick to Garland. Harley on the boot. And Bernie picks it up. Dolny came at him. Hamble's up in the air. Bouncing ball. Doldy goes again, looking for a teammate, hasn't got one, has to hold it in. Umpire takes it. Rodio Frick, who might get the total for the game inside 50s, thanks to Mac Jack. Yeah, 38 for Yak and Dander, 32 to Beechworth. So Yak just slightly got their noses ahead in the inside 50s. Very good. Over the shoulder. Ryan. Wants to come this way to Middleton. Lingham's been good today. Here's Ellett. Lingham after him. Clears, he gets his kick away inside 50. Stead at the back, got rid of his opponent. Connor Stone circles around. Gets it to Alessandro Belchi. Short one. Finds Tristan Stead. This ball must go through, Brooksy. It must be a goal. Yeah, this is what they got him for. He travels up from Melbourne. So this is what you've got big names for to come in. Hopefully get the job done here for him. Got to kick it, Freaky. Yeah, they certainly do. They've had three inside 50s to start this last quarter as well. So they're getting some repeat entries. And they're just using the ball a little bit better in this third, sec, last quarter compared to what they were in the third quarter. So just finding a few more targets. And their foot skills have picked up certainly in the start this last quarter. Yeah, yeah absolutely right, Freaky. Just a bit more composed this term. Here goes Tristan. He launches from 40. And that one. That's even a point. That's gone out on the full. Think your ball. Tricks back again. All oh, that bad ball's back again. <laughs> <laughs> it's feeling really interesting. Long one from the back pocket. Leach. Got hands to put it to ground.
Swannies up against uh, the Tykes. Obviously, I'm very biased, man. Yeah, but yeah I can see Chilton winning. It's traditionally a pretty close game, but yeah, we've got no excuse. We'll have a full list to pick from, and yeah, Chilton should be too strong, I'd say. Yeah, how's the big man, Scott Meyer? Yeah, he's the rest in the last couple of weeks, but he'll be cherry right for tomorrow. Big, big game player. He'll be huge for us tomorrow. Yeah, what a player he is, eh? Hey? Unreal. Leach, Stevens, ripped around in the tackle. And Bryce said holding the ball there. So this is Kimmy Jarrett, brother of Huey. He wants to go right out wide left of centre wing. Donna, he got a hand to it. Players searching for the ground level. Almost kept in boy out of bounds again, Freaky. Yeah, in this last quarter, as we touched on, three inside fifties already for Beechworth, but just haven't been able to capitalise on it. Ben McIntosh is up to three disposals already. He's up to 22 for the game. He's been outstanding for, for Yak and Nanda as he's led his club all year. Yeah, the last term is brought to you by the Talangata Construction and Maintenance. X-Ray Group sees the scoreboard 68 to 31, and Japo Donk's time clock has gone five and a half. He's Molson to Braden Carey. Quickly back to Molson again. They want to come through the middle. Over the head of Logan Martin. He's Garland. And just goes with a wild old kick to the half four line. Bouncing ball. Huey Jarrett. And ducks back inside. Try to get on around Molson. So unfortunate there for Molson. Accidental leg. Here's Lee Dale and Stevens in a race for the ball. Dale, on to that left, quickly around the body. Dangerous spot, Kerry got hands to it. Donaghy, snap up in the air, silo kick coming down. Let's have a look. McMillan and also Kane Scott. Scott got the handball away to Brent Surrey. And back to Ryan. 35 metres out of the fence. Rolling ball. Ball's gone out of bounds, Freaky. Yeah, beautiful uh, spoil there from the Yakandanda player uh, in McInnes. It was a really... Yeah, Beechworth was out then and just got a fist in there to get it out of bounds. So really good work there. We'll have the post game for Lewis Dixon Holmes. Great sponsors of the TDFL live stream. We thank all of our sponsors. We couldn't bring in this coverage. It's as simple as that. We didn't have them. Been great to us. Not only today in recent seasons in the TDFL finals. He's Donaghy in front of Dolny. Ball's gone out of bounds. So, again, another stoppage. But this sets the ruse. Brooksy, they just want to shut it down. Yeah, they don't care. It just becomes a stalemate out there. Stoppage after stoppage. They don't need to score right now. Luke Brooks for Aubrey Wodonga. MG has been great this afternoon for these special comments. McIntosh on to Petrala to McBurney. Harry Brooksy. <laughs> Brooksy, you've cursed this footy. Someone check that footy, please. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It's been amazing, hasn't it? For two very highly talented teams, the foot scores haven't been great at all. Yeah, on a beautiful day. Little wins. Freaky. What do you got for us, mate? Mac Jack stats. Yeah, Ben McIntosh up to four disposals in this last turn. Takes him up to 23 for the game. He's probably been the best player on the ground, I'd say. He's just run, his leg work and his run work all day has been outstanding for the Roos. Stevens just tried to take Marshall on. Didn't work. That's okay, though. He had to try something. Endeavour was good. Can't die wondering. Now Marshall's limping too here, Brooksy. Yeah, he needs to look in. Uh, he had Garland short there, but yeah, no, he's limping as well. So Marshall. Connor with a high ball. Big fly. Crowd level. Leach. Hands up in the hands of Tom Cartledge. And Cartledge. Marshall again. Got one out to Yui. Jerry loves taking them on. Sally had him though. Two balls. And then McIntosh with a half forward line. Griner got a hand to it. Here comes Petrala. Ethan on the left foot. High ball going down towards the pocket. Locker gaps the road in. McMillan got shoved out of it. Running onto it was Eaton. Has one bounce. And tries to hook it back. Who's he got there? Belch. He has to take on Leach. Stead. Back to Alessandro. Short one to Fendick. It's been quiet in the second half. He was injured though. Kate Surrey. Gets one back to Brenton. Ten best and fairest between them for the Bush Rangers. Unbelievable. Then to Cartlidge. Now, is he going to go long? He'll have to in the end. He wants Connor Stone. Now, there's one foul after the play. Now, Brooksy, what's going on here in the background? Uh, 
Brent and Surrey got one of the Jarrett boys and then the other brother come to help him out and then the other Surrey boy come in so that was about to get very interesting. Yeah, it's fizzed out now, there's not much in it but yeah at first it looked like it might take off. Going in a well done Garland and then came away with it, sent it to centre wing, Griner. Which way is this going? That was one of those ones that probably gone either way, Freggy. Yeah, it certainly could have been. Just looked like a nice even contest to me. And to Kate, sorry. Now Kate, he's got Stead on for him. Good vision, good running from Stead and takes the mark 45 out. The time getting away on the Japo Donks time clock. I'll tell you how long that's gone, Freaky. Uh, 11 and a half minutes, Luke. Scoreboard 68 to 31, thanks to the X-Ray Group. Final turn brought to you by the Talangata Construction and Maintenance Group. Molson out the back to Kate Surrey. And Lee Dale, has that gone across the line? It has. Well, it's been a wonderful day here. Beautiful day weather-wise. Couldn't have asked for a better one. Absolutely perfect. And the Roos, well, they look home. They look like they'll advance to take on the Hawks next Saturday. Brooksy? Yeah, it should be a cracking game next week. Probably been the two. Oh, well, they finished one and two in the ladder for a reason. So, yeah, next week should be a cracking game. Yeah, so no nerves for the Roos. It's been wonderful this afternoon. Here's Fendick. Campbell, oh Brooksy, I'm going to have to say it again. <laughs> well, he was under pressure, was I will yeah, say I'll that. give him that one, he yeah. was under pressure. Yeah, that's it. So Freaky just down, out of bounds in front of our broadcast spot here. Yeah, probably a, a big last 15 minutes for, for Beechworth as well. We seem to think, obviously, Yak and Dan are going to get the chocolates today, but really big for Beechworth to stick to their system, just get a bit of momentum going into their game next Sunday where they play, obviously, Chilton or Barney. So they don't want to lose too much here and just make sure they keep a bit of their system and keep a fair bit of momentum going into Fantastic, the passion. Luke Brooks for Aubrey Wadog, MG. Now let's have a look at this contest. Let's see who can sort it out. Williams up high. Kate Surrey came burning through. Whistle, throw. It's going to get the way of Lee Dale. Dale, good delivery to Yui Jarrett. Now Petrala's on, on the wing. It's going to go more direct to Leach. Here comes Petrala now. Picks it up. Long one looking for Donaghy. Good kick from Petrala. Nice mark from Nick Donaghy, Brooksy. Yeah, it's a great mark. He's a good player, this bloke. Carey's trying to peel off. He's been good back there. Once he realised McMillan's got the sore ankle, he's trying to be that third man up, but he couldn't quite get to that one to help out. last turn. Yeah, spot on, Friggy. Nothing better, Brooksy, than when a player just dictates the lead for a forward. Yeah, it was the perfect kick, wasn't it? As Freaky said, the only one person could mark that. And if you can finish this here, it's going to be a big win for Yak and Dander. Here goes Nick. No, no one's wide. Not his best kick, and that one's gone through for one behind. So 69 plays 31 on the X-ray group scoreboard. Final turn is brought to you by the Talangata Construction and Maintenance Group. Chapo Donk's time clock freaky has gone close to 14. We might go around the grounds very shortly, mate, once you've got a chance to get things together. Now, Donna, he's run onto this. Oh, he fumbles, Nick. Guy, oh, then he misses the hat kick off the ground and gets it. 
On the second attempt. Well, that was good to watch. Looks a bit of entertainment. <laughs> it was a bit of entertainment. He's had a bounce to things for Helen, but he's had a swing and a miss. And he's got it off the ground for about a metre out. But yeah. deserved the goal. He's worked pretty hard today. You reckon you hear about that one, Freaky? Oh, I'd hope so. That was all arms and legs. He looked like a baby giraffe running yeah, into the goal. Then his yeah. arms and legs are everywhere, Nick. But no, lucky he was able to, to finish off his good work there as he touched on Luke. We just go around the grounds in the other games at the moment. Yeah, Wonga too strong for Wodonga and the Ovens and Murray. 100 to 54. Wayne Grand Rovers too good for North Aubrey. Wodonga Raiders look like they'll get their second win for the year against Myrtleford up there at the McNamara Reserve. Wow. And Aubrey look like they're going to be too good for Lavington in that game as well. Yeah, very good. Great work, Freaky. The stat sensation for us on o &M Live and today the TDFL final stream. Hope you've enjoyed the action. Don't forget, our guys back here tomorrow. The great Gus McLeod, Sir Robert McKinlay, Panda Escott and Freaky. And Brooks, he'll be back here with his Chilton Swans. They take on the Barnawatha Tigers. Griner, a long run for this one. Brent Ryan, a nice play from Griner, flicked it out the back. And Maslin brought down. Umpire's going to call for it. Left of centre wing on the far side. As we keep touching on, Ben McIntosh up to six disposals on the Mac Jack shed score, uh, stat sheet for this last term. He's been outstanding for Yak and Nana today. Yeah. Next week, we could be calling him a, a Barton medalist. So again, that's on Monday night. The commercial club who sponsored us here today on the stream. Ryan, half back for the Bushies. Sends it and floats it into the middle. McIntosh, there's that man again. And doesn't he stand out? Not only because he gets the Sharon so much with those fluoro green boots, Freaky. They're easy to pick, aren't they? Yeah. You'd see him from a mile away. So, no, he's been outstanding today, as we've, we've said numerous times. McInnes wants to come this way to Maslin. True center wing. Now, we're going to try and get Mr. Brad Freak down on ground level straight after the siren. Freaky, so uh, you're a busy man. McBurney brought down. <laughs> We've got a special comments uh, commentator here, Brooksy. And I reckon they were pretty lucky. I don't think that one was ball. Yeah, I'm sure the, uh, the Mike picked that one up, Freaky. Yeah, they definitely cleared and clear, I'd say. Yeah. No uh, yeah. shortage of advice in country footy. You've got to love it. Brent Surrey takes a couple and now he's gone. McIntosh sends it into the pocket. Nice delivery. The ruse to finish off here over the top. Here's Donahue, another. Let's kick the last two for the ruse, Nick. And that is a quartet for him. That's four. 81 place, 31. The ruse safely home, Luke Brooks. Yeah, good team footy, but McIntosh could have blazed away. Good leadership, give it off. And McMillan could have got selfish and got himself another one. But, yeah, he's been huge. His numbers weren't big in the second half, but look at him lip it off. It's been a pretty big effort to yeah. just give him that extra rotation. He's just sat deep in that forward pocket, and yeah, it's been pretty gutsy for McMillan, to be honest. Yeah, pl playing cricket with uh, Lockie Brooks, easy ultimate team man he'll do anything for the team so no surprise for him to sit down and full forward for him today and just try and do his best yeah good on him he's earned his rest so uh he'll be literally on ice i reckon tonight but what do you do in that situation freaky so he's and brooksy so he's, he's trying to run it out is that one you rub your heat into or do you, you put it on ice I reckon he has to get some ice. It looked pretty blown up a quarter time from what we could see from a bit of a distance. It looked like there's a pretty big egg on the side of it straight away. Yeah, yep. He's Griner. And then nice delivery to Lawson. And Jimmy will have a shot from about 35 out to the Gaps Road end, Freaky. Yeah, obviously a talented junior is Jimmy Lawson. He won the, the third league, best and fairest, last year with 33 votes. So really, really talented young player that's coming to the senior side this year. I think in the second half, he's really built into the game as well. He's, he's been really good for, for the Roos today. Yeah, trip to the Barbers too, looks like, during the week. Looking slick. Aerodynamic. Jimmy's got it. He's kicked the goal. The Barber will be happy with that. I wonder if the Barber will get a run grand final week too, Friggy. That's what usually happens, doesn't it? Like, there's only players uh, going for a trim and, and they look a little different come the big day. Well, if they, if they do get there, looking at his haircut, he, today, need he might even get another touch-up before next He might, week. he Never might. Know. Yeah, he might. Might be one-a-week type operator. He could be. 
Dustin Martin, one of your men, Brooksy, he's uh, he visits pretty regularly, doesn't he? Yeah, full of hair, hair cast, but I'm not sure he's going to get a statue to build of him just yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. And Dimaray off to the goalie, mate. Yeah, he, he owes us nothing, mate. Good luck to him. Go and enjoy that retirement package. Yeah, unreal, eh? Fancy getting three flags in that tenure. Amazing. Stead heading the ball back to the umpire. 87 plays 31 on the X-ray group scoreboard final term here. It's brought to you by the Talagata Construction and Maintenance Group. Chapo Donks time clock freaky. What have we got in the final term, mate? Uh, just under 20 minutes. Carey off to Brent Surrey and then Surrey sit it inside 50 to the Pony Club in or close to inside 50. Here's Campbell Fendick. He'll make sure of that. Campbell goes for home. Nice drop punt. Straightens up. That's a beauty. Well done. Well done. That is a contender of the Great Outdoors. What's that one? Or the Union Hotel goal of the day, I should say. A beauty. Well done to Campbell Fendick, and he's been very handy. Good player, Freaky. Yeah, he certainly is. He, he's probably been a bit quiet in this second half, as Brooks, he touched on. Looks like he picked up a knock late in that third quarter. He looks like he's coming off the ground now as well. He's had the four disposals in this last quarter on the Mac Jack shed stat sheet. That takes him up to 16 for the game. But fought hard for his bushes today, but unfortunately not going to get over the line. Beautiful. Now, uh, one of your daughters, Brooksy, playing in the... She's got an involved... ...girls have stuck at it, and yeah, the club's in a good spot. They've got the two wins over there today, and hopefully a get a win tomorrow. And she's the GA. She plays in the goal attack, yeah. Yeah, Ripper. And Stevens with the high ball going inside 50. Well done, Logan Martin getting back for his ruse. And wants to spear it to the outer side. To O'Connell. 50 point lead for the ruse. They're safely home here in the qualifying final. At the Sandy Creek Reserve. Fremantle have beaten Hawthorne by 37 points and North Melbourne have beaten Gold Coast by 23 points in that game uh, to cost themselves the first draft pick I'd say now. North have beaten the Goldie by 22 po 23 points sorry. Fair dinkum. Why would you do that? 21 losses <laughs> in a row and then throw away the number one yeah. pick in the last game. Yeah. Unbelievable really. Crazy. So interesting. Shout out to Wayne Lappin. He'd be loving that. Yeah, where will Wayne be, Brooksy? Oh, he'd be probably drunk right now, the North Melbourne one. <laughs> OK. Yui Jarrett. Eaton brings him down. Umpire's going to call for it again. I think you're right about uh, Lockie as well. Brooksy too, just looking over, he's got right, uh, ice on his left ankle already, just standing on the boundary line over there. It's just at behind uh, Darren Holmes, the coach, so he probably can't just pick him up. Yeah, no, he'll be sore tomorrow. Again, stay with us for the Lewis Dixon Holmes post-game show. We might go around the grounds, freaky for our local footy, of course. As we said, last round in the Ovens of Murray, final round in the Hume Footy League. And some great netball also. Here's Cartledge going forward to the Pony Club end. Lingham over the back, Doherty runs onto it, right foot snap, and sneaks it in. Well done, Deegan. Nice goal. So 87 plays 43 on the X-ray group scoreboard. Chapo Donks time clock. Freaky, I'll rely on you for this one, mate. I'm sorry we've had to work off your phone today for the clock. No, that's right. Uh, 23 and a half minutes gone in this last term. Well done, mate. If we go around the grounds as well, the ovens in Murray, Yarrawonga too strong for Wodonga Bulldogs, 100 to 54. Wayne Grater Rovers too good for North Aubrey, 98 to 36. Wodonga Raiders going to be too good for Myrtleford, 65 to 48. And Aubrey too good for Lavington, 77 to 54. Yeah, very good. Carline Stakes of Mooney Valley coming up in about 16 minutes time. And great race that one. Middleton. And now Donaghy. Long ball forward here. Let's have a look down there. Leach went beyond him. Kate Surrey. Hooks it back. 
nice vision to Braden Carey. Plays on quickly. That's what they need. Brent Ryan. Griner came from the other direction, so this will be a free kick here. Getting Ryan high. Brent Surrey didn't like it. Bushies get it. To Kane Scott. And Scott. Just right of centre wing on the far side. He's Lee Dart. Look at that for a pick-up. Yui Jarrett. Maslin. Tom Carlidge came through. Maslin goes again. Liam Stevens brought him down. Whistle. Stevens gets the free kick. And he's a little proppy too, Brooksy. Yeah, there's a few sore boys out there. Especially the first half was pretty fire. The sting's gone out of it now a little bit, but yeah, there's going to be some sore boys tomorrow. Yeah, you're right about that. Certainly earn at the ruse. The Bushies made them work for That's bounced through. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that has bounced well, through. For the biggest leg break goal you'll ever see, Luke Brooks. Just shows you the day Yakadan have had. Everything's gone wrong oh, way, yeah. so <laughs> that's unbelievable. And they've managed to bring off McIntosh too. The skip has come off the ice up for the rest of the day. He looked a bit sore too, but uh, he's been huge for Yakadan. The lead from the front. Yeah, you're right. That bounce of the ball told a story, Freaky. He had. He's even, even Leachy's out there at the moment. Just giving his best Shane Ward impersonation there with pretty, a leg break. <laughs> he's having a bit of fun out there, the big fella. He yeah. Was, he was getting an earful from it. I think it was Marshall in the pocket. He wanted you pass it to me. <laughs> for a goal. <laughs> Yeah, Union Hotel goal of the day for Leachy. Oh, he had it all planned out. He's been practicing that one for months and pulled it out in the first qualifying final. There's Williams off the cartilage. Oh, well done by Pritchard. Try to get into the advantage of Middleton. Then off the ground. Pony club head here inside 50. McKinnis comes tearing out for the ruse. Got it on the boot. Sent it out towards the half-back flank. Dale after it. Went to ground. So too to Stevens. Dale cleverly off the ground there. And then into the advantage of McBurney, over the top to O'Connell, back to McBurney, Harry squaring kick, oh great footy, finding Griner, Luke Brooks, that was terrific end-to-end -end play from the Kangaroos. Yeah, great team footy and super from Lee Dale over there, it was a 50-50 contest, smart enough just to kick the footy off the ground and sometimes in finals footy, just take ground when you get a chance and that's a perfect example of it. Lee Dale up to 24 disposals as well in this game on the Mac Jack Shed statue. He's been outstanding on that at wing for the, uh, the Roos today. This will be the Roos 15th. And they get it. 99 plays 43 on the X-Gray Group scoreboard. Chapo Dodd. Yeah. Let's have a look. So the ball taking a while to come back to the centre here. Just trying to chase an upper Murray score as well, Lukey. Obviously they had the grand final up That's there right, yeah. between Kajiwara and uh, Bullio. I get another mate of mine, Drew Cameron's coaching Kajiwara in that game. So How many mates have you got, Freaky? They're everywhere. Oh, I've only got a couple, but they only happen to be doing a lot today. So. And hopefully we do see that fan club back for next week. Those who joined us on the stream last year, they would have heard the Freaky Fan Club downstairs uh, with the chant going. Remember that, Brooksy? Yeah, I do remember that. You'd remember it well, of course, coaching that day, but you would have seen it back in the live stream. Yeah, I have watched the replay once or twice, <laughs> so I have heard it. Yeah, Freaky almost... Uh, Best hundred bucks I've ever spent. <laughs> yeah. Bring your crowd. Very good. This is Kate Surrey, deep in the fence for the Bushies. So it hasn't been their day. They've fought tooth and nail, though. Here's McBurney to Yui Jarrett. Kate Surrey, gee, that's a good effort from Kate Surrey. Probably a little stiff in the end. Mm. I, I agree, Luke. That was an outstanding effort from Kate Surrey, considering yeah. how late in the game it is and where the game position is. To set, keep chasing for his side like that, I, I think he's a little bit very unlucky there not to be rewarded. Yeah, hanging on for dear life. Now, I'm not sure whether that was the hand or the wrist that was giving him trouble, but he just gripped on firmly with that hand. Williams to Petrala, hurried inside 50, Griner came out, Surrey came from the other direction, McBurney, he's been wonderful today, over to James O'Connell, one of the vice captains of Yakandanda, to Tristan a half forward, 
Marshall swings around. Delivery wasn't the best. Liam Stevens playing in front. Dale's on his tail. Stevens fighting away. Goes to ground. And the ball has gone out of bounds. Outside 50 at the Lockhart's Gap Road in 99 place 43 on the X-ray group scoreboard. Japo Donks time clock in the final term. And we do apologise. It's gone close to 30. The clock hasn't been working all day on the scoreboard. So Freaky's been doing some great work, flicking back, trying to find scores and setting the clock for us. Stevens, Dale. Try to take him on. Umpire said, holding the ball. I think Stevens is one for Beechworth. He can hold his head up high today. I think he's played a really good game. Tried hard for him all day. That's it. Ryan coming out, taking the mark. Houston. Martin. Dale to Donaghy. So slightly backward of centre wing, far side to Yui Jarrett. Good player. Inside 50, nice delivery to Zach Leach. Brooksy again, good footy. Yeah, they've been impressive, Yak and Dan. Key, we've got a bit to worry about next week. Is uh, first trip to the finals for a while, but yeah, they're here to play. They've been very good. Yeah, you're right about that. What a belter that's going to be next Saturday. Freaky, the Hawk is in the ruse. Yeah, it certainly will be. Top, as Brooks, Brooksy said earlier, the top two teams for the season, and there's a reason why they are. It's going to be an absolute barn burner here next Saturday afternoon. Hopefully, weather conditions are the same as what we've got today. Official all clear, and there it is, six points to the Ruse. 105, place 43, that's a double for Zach Leach. The X-Ray Group scoreboard, they're well up, the Ruse, and safely home. Japo Donk's time clock well, was going over 30, so we're going 31, final term, so there couldn't be long left here. <laughs> Maybe we might be making up for the third quarter, which only went about 23 minutes. Yeah. This one's closing into 32 minutes now, we might be making up a bit of lost time. Luke Brooks has been with us for Aubrey Wodonga MG this afternoon. Special comments. Freaky as always on the Mac Jack stats. And Luke Francis also. And a great day here. There's Maslin to Yui Jarrett. Great play. Just tapped it on to Donaghy. Long ball forward. Bouncing. There's the icing. And that's five for Donaghy. A mix had a day out. That's the way you want to play in a final, Luke Brooks. Yeah, he's been great. He's probably the most dangerous forward. And in the last probably 10 minutes, he's gone in the middle. And very good for him. Jared as well. Huey just to tap it onto him. Unselfish. He could have grabbed it himself. But team footy. And as I said, it's a pretty quick way home here. It's not that long this round. So you get a chance. That just shows you what you can do. Comes from pretty good pedigree. His dad Paul played footy at Yarrawonga as well. His brother Will plays at uh, Wodonga Raiders at the moment. And his other brother Jack used to play footy at it. Uh, Yakandanda as well and Wodonga Raiders. So some good brothers that he plays with. Obviously, would have grew up with him in the backyard and that good pedigree to come from. So it's now a 68 point margin on the X grade group scoreboard here. Final term, Sandy Creek Reserve, Matutia Phil live stream. Can't be too long left now. Siren will go on his second. Here's Stead coming away at the middle and sends it forward. Lingham going back, picks it up, hooks it around his body. Bouncing ball down the line. And it's gone out of bounds in front of Maslin. Big Liam Williams is one probably the might be a right week of training this week. He's been pretty sore, it looks like it all day. He's he, after every rock contest yeah. he's sort of got down. He's just struggling in the middle of the ground now. He looks like he's making his way off to the bench, but I don't know if he's gonna get too many helpers wanting to, to come back onto the ground. He's been told to run down to full forward. Oh, you're right about that. Freaky. Last term for to Langata construction and maintenance. Good mark, Brent Ryan. It's been good in the final term. Kane Scott got brought down by Marshall. So we count down the final moments here. Yak will take on Kiwa Sandy Creek next Saturday right here. Again, all the final streams. Donaghy, Braden Carey. And we'll have 
Scooter. Scooter Fraser for the Charcoal Kings on the boundary for us next week, Freaky. Yeah, he certainly will be. be up and about, big Scoot. What's his ruse running out next week? Yeah, Charcoal Kings, great sponsors of the GDFL finals. And Scooter down on the boundary. Always gives great mail and a great insight from that level. Left of the interchange gates here. That's a story down there, Brooksy McMillan's. I reckon they're, just gonna finish, good, is he? they're gonna finish with 17 yak. Yeah, uh, Williams have just walked himself off. He's battled hard the big fella. He's been sore for I think he hurt himself in the second quarter and after every ruck contest he's laid on the ground he looks sore. So they're gonna finish with 17 yak. Yep. Yeah, makes sense. Here we go. Let's have a look. Leach. How many have we got now, Freaky, in the Japo Dong's time clock? Just about to go to 35 minutes. <laughs> I almost get the feeling the siren might have conked out. Here's Donna. He's swung around in a big tackle. in the crowd like we are here out at Sandy Creek. It's fantastic. Now you're right, Freaky. We're down low, aren't we? We're right amongst it. It's Carey. Liam Stevens picks it up. Harley on the boot left foot. Houston got a hand to it. Pritchard dishes out to Thornton. Thornton receives it back from Pritchard. Long one. Look at that one from Thornton. Logan Martin, well done. Getting back for his ruse and touching it across the line, Freaky. Yeah, Martin and Lingham for, for Yak and Dan today. I think they've been outstanding on that, that last line of defence for him. Lingham took several marks down there at, at different times, so they've been really strong in that back half for him. So we're going close to 36 minutes here. Chapo Dong's time clock. Well, they could have used an hourglass for the final turn, Brooksy. <laughs> we could have, yeah. Freaky. <laughs> I know what they're catching up from the third quarter. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's right, he nailed it. The Roos get home. Convincing winners. They cleared out on the Bush Rangers today. It was Yak and Dander, 17-9, 1-11 over the Beechworth Bush Rangers, 6-8-44 on the X-ray group scoreboard in the final siren time. So, uh, yep, too good today, Brooksy, as simple as that. The Roos for the Bush Rangers. Yeah, they come to play. Look, from the start, they were kicked the first couple through McMillan, and yeah, they never slowed down. They were very impressive. Beechworth had a bit of a crack in the second quarter, but yeah, that was all all uh, the Yakinana boys in the second half as well. Yeah, now Lockie Armstrong, now Freaky's out on the ground. Uh, he's going to try and grab us an interview. Lockie Armstrong, not well at all, is coming down under our broadcast spot here. He's got his left leg heavily strapped there, Brooks. He said, that's not a good sign for the Bush Rangers. No, it's not. There's a few there, and I won't lie, I'm taking notes here. So, yeah, yeah no, yeah, we're all over yeah. all these injuries. There's a few here, and <laughs> yeah. also with the Swan, still involved. But, yeah, no, there's quite a few injuries coming out of this game. There's no, no doubt about that. Yeah, so we'll just see what happens in the next 24, 48 hours. It's going to be so interesting. Water Mail is going to tell a story on Monday morning, that is for sure. I'll need a few uh, injury articles. Now, we'll just see if we can track down Freaky. Our post game is for Lewis Dixon Holmes. I don't know if you can see Freaky out there, Brooks. He's just can here. I wouldn't mind being uh, right. there. Try to get lucky, but he's just in front of us heading out there now. Final specials. That's it. That's right. So it'll be interesting to see who he gets. Freaky. But tomorrow again, don't forget, back here for the live stream, we've got Barney and Chilton. Luke Brooks, Chilton Swans, the reigning premiership coach from last year. And what a game that'll be. Can't wait for that. Gus McLeod, Robbie McKinlay, Blake Escott, Brad Freak will be here. Now let's have a look. Now Freaky's out there with the mic. He can't hear us. We're just going to throw to him and see if he can... Looks like he's got the skipper, McIntosh. Yeah, he has. He's gone to Ben. Again, one of the favourites for the Bart Middle Monday well, night. Ben Here he goes, yeah, Freaky. Longer tyre power player of the day. Benny, congratulations on the win, mate. Obviously a long time from the club between drinks. You must be really proud of the, the boys' effort. Yeah, but yeah, it's like... And obviously sets yourselves up with a big game next week against Kiwi Sandy Creek. You must be pumped to be back out here again next week. 
And your own body, mate? Obviously sat off the last sort of 10, 15 minutes. All good? Yeah, it's good. Too easy, I'll let you go, boys. Well, yeah. Congratulations, mate. Yeah, so Ben McIntosh with Brad Freak out in the middle. Unfortunately, it's a little hard to, to pick up what Ben was saying, but that happens. And here at the beach where the bush rain is looking a little sore and sorry as they come under our broadcast right into the sheds. And, uh, well, they're going to pick themselves up quickly, Brooksy, because uh, they've got a game in uh, seven days. No, they do. Uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they'll be back here next Sunday on Father's Day, the, the Bushies. Eight and days, they'll yep. be obviously playing the winner of Chilton Barnawatha tomorrow. So tomorrow should be a cracking game. And if the conditions like they are today, hopefully it's another big crowd. And, yeah, as, it couldn't have been a better day for footy out here today. It was perfect conditions. And Jack and Nana were very impressive. Absolutely. So Ben McIntosh, absolutely outstanding this afternoon. Now the coach of Yak bringing them in. Darren Holmes. They're on the right track. It was a massive win here today. The first trip out here for a while. And, yeah, very, very impressive back in Edinburgh. Yeah, what a piece of football history, eh? That was when the pick was let loose at the SCG with Plugger. Blasted across it. So there's Darren. And look at the Ruse crowd. They're up the Yak supporters in good honour. They're charging towards the flag. In 2023, can they get the job done? That's the question. In a long time, 2000 was the last one they won. 23 years ago. And as we said, they went to a great year in the COVID year. It was 21, was it? So Brooksy, I think, we, yeah. like he said, they were having such a great year. They were. Unfortunately, we lost the season. They were 11 and 1, and we were 10 and 2. So it was probably, yeah, yeah we were probably a little bit the same. COVID probably wasn't kind to us. Probably got the same as Yak and Anne. They got a good squad together and bad timing. But uh, yeah, we got the chocolates last year, and obviously Yak are travelling well this year. So hopefully, Chilton can go back to back. But yeah, Yak are definitely on the right track. Luke Brooks today with us for all the dog MJ. Let's see if we can pick up this song here. Fricky's down there. The Akindanda Roo is home, Roving mics, eh? Roving <laughs> mics. Anyway, these things happen. We just lost a bit of reception there from Freaky. That happens. It has been a big win. Who do you think stood out for Beachy, the losing team today, Brooksy? Who, who was uh, the kid Stevens worked pretty hard. But they just got beat through the midfield. I thought Molson at, at half back was probably just about their best player. The vice captain Hamish down at half back was probably close to their best. But yeah, there's a lot of footy going in there, so we had plenty of chances. But yeah, I thought Yak were they were pretty dominant, really. Their, their best players were clearly better than the Beechworth ones on the day. But the beauty of a good year, you get a double chance and they lick their wounds, and they'll be back next week to play the winner of tomorrow's game. So exactly, Yui Jarrett, he's a bull, isn't he? Yeah, he's a bull. He's a hard man to tackle. He probably had a slight second quarter. It was no coincidence. That was probably Yak's quietest quarter too. So he's pretty influential on the group. Their midfield was super. McIntosh, Lee Dale, obviously Freak will have the numbers for us to some stage. But yeah, they were huge. I just thought Yak and Anders back six. They were crucial. I thought. Marshall, Martin, Lingham, yeah, the three yeah. were very, very good. And they just seem to find someone all the time, just that spare one behind yeah. the ball. Beechworth will probably learn from that. They kept pushing an extra to the stoppage. and But, yeah, Yak were happy to leave that extra back and, yeah, and then to lose him. So he'll be a big blow, not being able to play next week. But, but yeah, their midfield, their back six was very good. Then, obviously, Donahue up forward. He got the lick of the ice cream at the end for him. Yeah, so perhaps any early uh, finals nerves or question marks lingering over the ruse 
streak he were, were quickly dispelled in probably the first two or three minutes yeah that first quarter was really dynamic for him I think it was seven goals to two or seven goals to one I think in that first yeah. quarter they just came out full of run and hit the scoreboard and that was probably the, the killer blow really obviously they put on a few late in the, in, in the last quarter there but that margin about 30 points sort of lingered around for a large period mm-hmm. of the game so it was that first quarter that really they got the job done as you say might have had a, if, might have thought coming into it they might have had a few nerves been uneasy playing yeah. first final in such a long time for the club and, and obviously for a lot of these boys it would have been their first final um, to come out and perform the way that the way they did in front of a pretty good crowd it's a credit to them and it, it, and it shows why they're such a class act and, and a lot of people think that they are the, the team, potentially the team to beat this year exactly great pitches we're seeing here this is the Sandy Creek Reserve after the final siren. A few people out having kick to kick. What a great service, Brooksy. Oh, it's magic. The MCG, the Bush, and Air 90, and Ross Williams, and then Blokes. someone who's played at a very high standard yeah, they, were, they were pretty influential and I reckon they'll be pretty big for the group that's it, the post game for Lewis Dixon Holmes, righty o Fricky, we might have a comprehensive wrap of our Mac Jack stat sheets for this afternoon yeah, in this game here, it was all it was probably in favour, it was very even the inside 50s throughout the game in today's match, Jack Nan had the 50 inside 50s to 42 in favour of them they got away from them in that last quarter and that's obviously where they'll be able to kick away on that scoreboard as well. Mark- Disposals today and Ben De McIntosh obviously a Wodonga Tire Power player of the day. I thought he was outstanding. Uli Jarrett was really good early. Only number the 10 possessions in the game. We have a look at the Beechworth side of things. They're three boys we follow today. Still at different stages all picked up little knocks and a little bit of injury. So they probably didn't get the best out of them just because their bodies probably didn't let them. Campbell Fendick had the 16 disposals. Tom Stone had 13 disposals and Tom Cartledge had the 12 as well. So both teams will, will certainly need to, to rest. Freshen up their bodies and get themselves right for either Barney or Chilton next week. Yeah, so interesting. So the Yakandana Roos today running out huge winners, 17-9-1-11 to Beechworth's Bush Rangers, 6 8 44. So a 67-point margin when it was all said and done, a little over 11 goals. So as Freaky said, yeah, Yak to take on the Hawks next Saturday right here at the reserve for a spot in the big one for the TDFL Grand Final for 2023. Tomorrow, elimination final day in first grade. It's the Chilton Swans, the reigning premiers, up against the Barnawatha Tigers. Gus McLeod, Robbie McKinlay, Blake Escott, and Freaky will be here on the TDFL live stream and also being broadcast through 1494 2AY, Freaky. Yeah, it certainly is. Only tomorrow and the grand final, the only two games that will be broadcast live on 2AY. So if you can't get to the live stream or if you want to get outside and, and do a few jobs around the house, and you can put it on the wireless and listen to us as we as we go call the game tomorrow. It should be a great game. Exactly. Brooksy, thank you so much for, for being here and with us and commentating on special comments. Fantastic to have you here. I really enjoy it. We'll help you get the job done, we'll make your job a smooth one. Dunst Twin City Cranes, for your semis, riggers, spotters, cranes. Safety is our second name. You're looking pretty with Dunst Twin City, no job's out of reach. Rig it, lift it, move it, shift it, no fuss, talk to us. We'll help you get the job done, we'll make your job a smooth one. Dunst Twin City Cranes. CADMAC want your machinery to keep working as hard as you do. So, as you're gearing up for the busy season, now is the time to stock up on your machinery oil and net wrap. For a limited time, get a free cap when you buy 20 litres of any New Holland oil. 
or get a free jacket with every pallet of New Holland net wrap or bail twine. These offers are only available at CADMAC and while stocks last. CADMAC, helping you grow for life. T's and C's apply. Finer Embroidery is in the fabric of our community. Any logo on anything so your business can proudly present themselves well. Embroidery that adds that personal touch that doesn't break the bank. Join the Finer Embroidery community today. Proudly supporting the TDFL. Drag it, drop it, crop it, play it, write it, paste it, and erase it. Drag Need a computer that won't crash? Need your Wi-Fi turbocharged? Need better data backup? Whatever you need your computer to do, Wangaratta Computers will help you do it better. Because that's what we do best. And we can do it in store or at your home. So get your tech working better at wangaratacomputers.com.au. Play it, write it, paste it, and erase it. CADMAC want your machinery to keep working as hard as you do. So, as you're gearing up for the busy season, now is the time to stock up on your machinery oil and net wrap. For a limited time, get a free cap when you buy 20 litres of any New Holland oil. Or get a free jacket with every pallet of New Holland net wrap or bale twine. These offers are only available at CADMAC and while stocks last. CADMAC, helping you grow for life. T's and C's apply. Finer Embroidery is in the fabric of our community. Any logo on anything so your business can proudly present themselves well. Embroidery that adds that personal touch that doesn't break the bank. Join the Finer Embroidery community today. Proudly supporting the TDFL. We'll help you get the job done, we'll make your job a smooth one. Dunn's Twin City Cranes. For your semis, riggers, spotters, cranes. Safety is our second name. You're looking pretty with Dunn's Twin City. No job's out of reach. Rig it, lift it, move it, shift it. No fuss, talk to us. We'll help you get the job done, we'll make your job a smooth one. Dunn's Twin City Cranes.